Good morning, everyone who watches Competitive Left 4 Dead 2, or afternoon or night, of course, if you're joining us from different continents. This is going to be one hell of a game we have in front of us for the semi-finals of RBT5 right here on Vanel's stream. It is 44 Biceps versus NV, home and away. The winner advances to the grand finals for the chance to play against Team Rehab on Hard Rain next week. But first, we do have this home and away game that proves potentially to be one of the most entertaining matches in this entire tournament. I am Rails Barlow one of your tournament administrators, and I am joined for today's cast by the one and only Mr. Dragon. Dragon, what are we expecting from this match? Uh, well, I for one actually don't know what to expect because of my lengthy hiatus away from the game and the community, but I do remember Team NV, and I've heard good things about 44 Biceps, so I think we should be expecting uh, what seems like a closely contested semi-final match. At least I hope we see that. I agree 100%. If we saw anything, it's that Team 44 Biceps can win these close games. They played against Team Evo in the quarterfinals, and it was less than 57 points cumulative between those two servers. It might be the same thing as today as we see these GLHFs going out. We are already live with Map 1 on the EU server, so it's 44 Biceps playing home first on Survivor side against Team NV on the Special Infected with that glorious red ping. First, it's going to be a Boomer Hunter Spitter Jockey moving its way in already. Single Boom is going to land onto Rochelle as the spit is going to go down onto just about nothing. It zeroes across the board. Let's do a quick roster rundown. For 44 biceps, it's SSRV, Fakes, Hat, and Antax. And who do we have for Team NV, Dragon? For NV, we have Kane, Kimchi, Flyby, and Deck. Indeed we do, and I have heard that Team Envy might be switching out one player when they go back to their home server. We will see if that's true or not, but first, 44 Biceps trying to make the most that they can on this EU server first. A hit is up for Team Envy. It is that quad cap with a Jockey Charger Hunter and Smoker. This is going to be a push coming out by Coach onto that Hunter, but Dragon, I expect a full respawn here and for them to hit on this bridge. Oh, definitely. If you've got a quad cap, you want to use it in a much better spot, such as this one. And they're going for it, but the charger misses his charge. Hunter goes in. Jockey lands on Antax. Hunter lands too. Smoker tries pulling, but uh, it's a bit late to the party. It does eventually pull coach, but gets cleared. With that red ping, those quads are even harder to land than they would be. We've seen a couple going out in these playoffs from different teams, but that is always going to be a threat when you have two teams that are as good on the special infected side as the two we have in front of us here. Survivors are going to look to make quick work of this alarm car in the front, and they're going to be spawning the first tank of the match in just a couple steps. They have to be careful, though, because the next hit is already up for Envy. Spitter, Boomer, Charger, and Jockey. If that Boomer got a boom on that alarm car, that could be detrimental for them. We do have Coach working his way over into the corner, kiting a Jockey and a Charger as they both die, and there is the single boom that does go out, but no alarm car, Horde Dragon. It's just going to be the rest of that boom as the first tank of this match comes up into the hands of Deck himself for Envy. Yeah, I mean, that was the ultimate set lineup they had. They were hoping, I think, at first to use something with the alarm car, but I, the way Coach was, uh, was sort of basing the attack, I think they all just went for him or tried to. And it's very minimal damage on the board, but this is kind of what you expect with two teams that are supposedly of equal skill level with a home and away contest in mind as well. I believe so. I mean, and Team NV right now are playing this game between 166 and 271 ping. So they have three players who are in a really, really tough spot when it comes to latency. Deck actually has the best ping of them all as he throws that E-Rock into the skybox. The hit did go out at the same time, but nothing really going for that. Deck also managed to jump out and transition onto the roof without taking any chip, but in this version of Zone Mod Dragon, those distance users can do some damage. Um, yeah, I've, I've heard one or two things about that. I've never really seen it yet, actually. Um, but I, that's interesting to see. I always thought that like, standard Uzi should have some sort of advantage from range, like, for, like, years ago when this was. The Charger goes in, misses completely, Boomer is too far away to land a Boom. The tank is sort of punching the car a bit further forward. He gets it over the roof and in between the building and the fence. He's got two cars to play with there, um, but he's just trying to make sure it doesn't take any more chip. He's on second pass, so 45%. So he needs to think about making a move going in soon. 
Indeed he does. He's going to be whacking that car over the fence. The other car is going to be pushed into the street, but it looks as though 44 biceps are poised to go forward on this, and after he hits that car up top, that is exactly what they're going to do. Going for the chip now with those Susies. We have a smoker pull going out onto Coach up top, but that's going to be an insta-clear going out onto that, as Deck is going to launch this car off the skybox, and there is nothing on the roof for him now, as he's just trying to dance back and forth with his HP. He knows if he goes in there right now, he's going to get absolutely shredded, and he's going to have to force that commit at the same time as this hunter and jock are gonna be looking to go in and help him out nice punch going out onto Rochelle another punch going out onto Ellis another punch landing onto Ellis Charger looking for the land onto Nick but he's not going to find it tanks gonna throw an E-Rock magic to land that as well on to Nick as he works his way around maybe one more punch but now he's gonna die honestly for that situation dragon I think they're happy with that damage Check the room, there might be crap in him. That's, it is, it's somewhat respectable, yeah. I mean, he tried to, he, he banked a lot on those two cars, it didn't work out. Um, and the spawns were a bit out of sync, but that charger at the end managed just to cause a bit of distraction. Great support, or well, it was adequate support at least for him to get the hits that he needed. It's not like an amazing result, but considering they're on the away server, like, it's still good damage. Agree with that 100%. As this next 2 2 is going to look to work its way in, it's that Hunter, Spitter, Boomer, and Smoker. Hunter is crouched down below. Smoker pulls, tries to go for Rochelle, is not going to land. The Hunter gets skeeted. Boomer and Spitter die last, and that means we might be seeing another quad cap attempt from Envy as the survivors work their way forward. They have a pretty imposing choke to be able to use that quad if they get it as well, as the survivors are going to have to stay around the hill area and potentially dropping into common. Yeah, I've just checked the bonus as well. They're still on course for over 600 bonus if they keep things just the way they are. Um, and that's a resource. So, I mean, against a team of Envy's um, stature and reputation, you, you know, especially on your home server, you need to be averaging somewhere in the region of about 1,000 points per chapter, I'd say, to be in with a really solid uh, shout of actually wow, taking the shit. overall victory. Exactly, and 44 biceps are going to be dropping into this quad at the same point in time as Envy is setting up a hunter across the way. It looks like we're going to see some rocket spawns going in. Charger is going to miss, however, as Nick is now going to get pulled. Jockey lands onto Rochelle, or sorry, Coach, for a bit of damage. And the hunter wasn't able to get much of anything. Flyby keeping that hunter on the opposite side. Not bad damage there, but again, no multi-cap landing. And this is going to be a 2-2 now, I think, for the hill. Yeah, that charge has certainly uh, sent a few fists flying into the action. Got, I mean, it's not bad damage. I mean, the survivors are still going very strong. And we now have... A t oh, a hunter got skeeted right away. I was about to say, it is a 2-2, but the boom has been popped. It's just a spitter and a smoker. That was a long tongue that managed to reach. And there is spit going, but it's only a fraction amount of damage on Antax. Smoker's still going. Um... I mean, he's just trying to hold on to dear life and try and cause distraction, but he's going back for a despawn. I don't know if he's going to get it in time. Spitter is just standing there. Didn't even bother going for the spit. Yeah, they saved that spitter from the hill hit, and I'm not sure if it had a recharge by the time 44 biceps made it to the safe room with a nice bonus to bring their total to 984 so far. Pretty much on pace of what you just said, actually, about how they want about 1,000 points a chapter, and I would definitely agree with that because... This Home and Away series has the potential for teams to be putting up an amazing fight, even on that red ping. Let's see if Envy can do just that now on Survivor side as we have a fast ready up into this first 2 2 for 40 board biceps. It's going to be a boomer, hunter, spitter, and jockey. Let's see if they can make anything happen as Envy work their way forward. Looks as though that's going to be the. The first hit maybe trying to come from a little bit behind them, but Ellis in the hands of Kimchi is doing a great job blocking this boss. <laughs> Yeah, this, this bus is a new site for me, to be honest. I've never actually seen this. Um, that just goes to tell you how far and away I've been out of this game and community. But there are, it is coming in now with the jockey. Um, causing distraction. Hunter from the right. Jockey landing on Rochelle. And Hunter also, they're all going on Rochelle, who's in spit. Oh, and has, they have, she was stuck in it a bit as well. She's trying to jump on the railing and it's taking a bit too long trying to get to uh, safety. But not bad damage, actually. I was looking at that and thought it would be pretty much a shutdown, but one of the things we've seen the top teams in this tournament do, no matter what version of zone mod it's on, right, is they are stacking damage on these individual survivors. That's one of the biggest things I think that I've seen in terms of a special infected play just going forward. 
And if you can't land a multi-cap onto teams because they're able to shut that down, it's like you can see a hunter plus a charger or even like a hunter plus a smoker and then a charger landing onto the same survivor, especially if there's a spit, just to be getting the, as much damage as possible. But this, of course, is going to be a quad cap for 44 biceps on the bridge. It's going to be a hunter, charger, jockey, and smoker. This will easily be one of the most dangerous hits I think Envy will have to play on this away server for them. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, they're kind of playing almost exactly how I remember them playing, like, many years ago. They, they're being rather slow, they're taking their time. They know that with higher pings, it's, um, there's a, a lot less room uh, for error. So, they're just making sure that the commons aren't a threat. They just got one at the back, and uh, that's Ellis just going for Antax. All oh, struggling a bit. Antax, get, sorry, Antax gets the pounce. Smoker lands. Charger just narrowly misses Coach. And there is a fist going out. Smoke is still up. Um, a little bit of damage going on the board. Not bad damage, actually. Um, but yeah, Envy survived that. It's the main thing. Exactly, and in an area like that where you have rocket spawns, it was really important for them to dodge that smoker from the front because then they were able to focus the rest of the pinners as they backed up. Let's see if they manage to push their way straight past this alarm car to get this tank spawned up, as we are going to be seeing the percentage actually get to the point that it needs to be in order for this tank to be spawned before that alarm car was any kind of threat. There is a jockey and a boomer on it, and that was almost a alarm car, I think, being set off by Kimchi, but he stood right at the distance that he needed to to make sure that didn't happen. We do have a Jockey though, oh. down below onto Kane for a bit of damage, but <laughs> this tank in the hands of Het is going to try and keep sight from a long way just because he also knows that there is no distance easy. They are rocking those Silent Suzy instead. Yeah, well, I mean, Silent Suzy's, I, mean, I don't know, have they been changed or do they still deal with the same amount of DPS uh, within a reasonable distance? So, in this version of Zone Mod, at that distance, it's literally doing about one damage per bullet, right? But the distance Uzi, right, the Unsilence, is able to do a whole lot more damage onto this tank. This is really chip that he can afford to be taking, though, as he's getting a little bit closer. And, as oh. you see, even from there, right, the range starts being a real issue for the tank, and it gets a lot worse than that one damage per second. Uh, this tank has got, oh, well, there's one car right behind the fence, but the other one that he's got there on the roof, he might be able to make something work with that, perhaps? I think it depends a lot on how the support sort of helps, if they can, find a way to funnel the survivors towards those hittables. But, um, exactly. it's looking a bit tricky now. Um, tank is coming in, he's already lost 1k HP, he tries getting the car in, oh, but that goes sideways completely. He's gonna have to go in with just a fist alone. And the support's coming in, double boom coming, triple boom! Smoker pulls Coach to the front. They're trying to get to Coach. A hunter's coming in and lands. On oh. oh my goodness. Oh, Rails, this looks disastrous for Team MV. It did, but he actually punched Nick back towards the double cap there. This might be a tank that they managed to survive, but already so much damage going out because of that triple boom. They did actually have the distance Uzi, so that tank was far away enough at the start to not take damage, but then you saw how he was getting absolutely railed as he started to get closer to them. He still has 1k HP though, Jockey bouncing around. There is still a horde trickling in from that triple boom. Tanks to throw an overhand rock, Madding to land it onto deck, recommitting now with that charger managing to land on to Ellis, and this is gonna be the first wipe of the game by 44 biceps on to NV Dragon. That boom was disastrous. Uh, it was either disastrous or it was magnificent, depending on who you side more. But I mean, what a what a SI play from uh, 44 biceps. I mean, that's that's the perfect start right there. You know, get just under 1k for the first chapter and wipe the team there. Um, what more could you ask for? Exactly, and that's one of those tanks where it can be an absolute calamity for the survivors. He didn't even really bring in a car, and he didn't need to, because then, once he started pushing back on the right-hand side, right, of the bridge, he was able to get them into a really unfavorable position, where all the SI were able to come, either from the front or from the back, in that way. So it was really, really, you know, just everything working as well as it possibly could, with the smoker getting the pull for the separation, and then the intercept imagine to go out onto that after the tank punched Nick back towards where the other survivors for smoke. So it was like a double cap that then turned into the tank decommitting with 1k HP and this is where we are now on map 2 with an almost 800 point lead for 44 biceps. Let's see what Envy can do to change that. That's gonna be a smoker pull going out onto coach and then the hunter does also get skeeted. The boomer and the spitter both dying prior to the smoker so this should not be a quad as we work our way forward and this tank is gonna be a kitty land tank I'm fairly sure. Reloading. 
But the percentage voice him. Yeah, that does feel like a kidding tank to me. Um, Coach just Reloading. getting all the kills in that first hat, first attack. Um, next one is coming up though. It is a jockey charger hunter, and is it a no? It's a spitter, so it's a three-one. Indeed it is. That Charger spawns on the left-hand side as this jockey's looking for something as well. Charger does manage to land onto Nick with a spit going out onto that as well. So a decent amount of damage from that hit. Would have been even better had the Hunter landed. But I actually think this might be a tank that they can push through to Kitty Land or take all the way back to this opening area. Either way, it is going to be mostly a hittable tank, I would say, for Team Envy at this point. They still have about 10 percentage points to go on Survivor side before spawning it, and they have a Smoker Spitter, Charger, and Boomer to take before that happens. Yep, Boomer landing a single proxy boom onto Ellis. Um, there is a Spitter, Smoker, and Charger coming up. Smoker at the back gets cleared. A little bit out of sync, that attack. They could focus the Smoker, then the Charger. Spitter couldn't really do much other than uh, spit and pray. Honestly, that Smoker was pulling in the opposite direction of the Charger there. We are going to see this tank spawn up as the survivors work their way forward, so it is the Kitty Land tank, but this tank is up into the hands of the one and only Flyby for Team NV. Dragon, that's a name that has been in the top tier of competitive Left 4 Dead 2 for an extremely long time. Oh yeah, I remember. Oh, more on that in a second. The attack is coming in, the Hunter's got to go for it. It does get a pound, Spit lands on top of that. We did uh, handle the Jockey. Oh my god, that's actually significant spit damage onto Antax. Indeed it was, I mean, and that's why Pounce Spit, especially in this version of Zone Mod, right, we're still playing 1.9 versus the newly released 2.0, which has a lot more changes in this mod. Spit is a real, real threat in terms of damage. That's obviously been one of the ways that teams have gotten damage since the start of competitive Left 4 Dead 2, but specifically here, the two things that are really, really... Now, that stand out the most in this version of the mod are the distance from the distance it's the damage from the distance Susie's and also the damage from spit this is going to be another hit going in though as we do see a single boom landing we do see a pull charge on to nick but that is going to get instantaneously cleared this dumpster is going to go flying close to the survivors and dragon i think flyby is trying to buy as much time as he can as he does have these hittables in play he's got a dumpster and also a forklift in front of him to use well, I mean, if he's buying time for the SI support, the SI support are definitely rewarding him for his efforts on keeping LOS. Because that was actually significant damage both on Ellis and then even more so on Nick. Um, and he's only just turned second pass, but he's got a forklift in play. He's got a dumpster further down the, down the uh, park. He's now starting to make his way in. And I think he's just trying to funnel the survivors back towards the uh, upper railway where the SI are spot waiting. They're going in. Oh, Charger misses by charging the rail. Hunter did land on Rochelle. Rochelle is going to get punched. She's probably going to go down to this. And, yep, she gets in capped. Jockey tries helping. Um, Flyby's arm just wasn't long enough at the end to hit Nick. But um, considering no hitables were really used to get any in caps for that area, that's good damage, I believe. I think, too, that the SI setup of that Hunter, Jockey, and Charger, I personally like to see a Smoker there, just because then you can get different separation, maybe a pull to a hittable, but they made it work with what they had, and that's one of those areas where the SI painters really do need to help the tank out, because it's hard for the tank to get a solo corner on its own in such an open area, but... 44 biceps only taking one in cap plus some other residual damage from that. It's going to be a smoker, hunter, spitter, and a boomer, potentially for the ladder choke. We have this boomer setting up in one of the areas that is almost unpoppable on that roof. Spitter as well is going to pre-spawn and maybe try to get something on the survivors with a, a first spit and then a second spit on the ladder, but... 44 biceps taking this as long as they need to. They do have two survivors bleeding, however, so let's see how they decide to approach this. It is probably going to be a 2-2 for this choke now. Ammo here. Yeah, absolutely. Spitter. I saw it go Hunter Spitter and a Boomer. Uh, Boomer's already pre spawned on the roof above, behind the ladder. Um, and it goes early as well, but that didn't land a boom at all. The hunt, the survivors are now coming up. Spitter goes for no spit. Just get a pull on coach, though. And he's separated. Oh, and the tongue just breaks. Oh my goodness, that is so unfortunate for Team NV. I think that was just some straight Left 4 Dead 2 shit that we just saw right there as that tongue got broken. Still a decent amount of damage though going out, honestly. Looking at 44 Biceps health, the thing for this that NV really need to hit on the next couple attacks is that damage bonus, right? Because the health bonus is at 30% and the damage bonus is at 94.4%, plus that pill bonus is giving them another 50 points. So if NV can make these last couple hits work, they could greatly decrease that overall bonus going into the safe room, and they have a 100 jockey, boomer, and a charger to try to do just that. I'm a reload. 
Yeah, I mean, they only just sit at above 500 bonus, so they're still on course for keeping that sort of averaging around about 1,000 points per chapter. Um, but they've got to survive this event, and I'd imagine at least two attacks, provided they go about it well. Charger missing a charge. Double, triple boom going with a jockey landing as well. Um, but very quick attack that's been very quickly dealt with. And now they are making a sword to save from probably one more attack on the board. Yeah, and most of the horde is behind here. There is a bit starting to trickle in from the front, but they really don't have anything to worry about yet in terms of getting common locked. And they are actually saving their pills as well. So this is going to be a strong hit from Envy. They need to make it actually work as best they can. Smoker Hunter, Charger, and Spitter spawning up in the back. Smoker Pool is going to go out, and the charge is going to get cleared right before Nick managed to get spit on, and the Hunter was beautifully blown out of the sky as well. That is basically a shutdown, aside from these common who are still doing a decent amount of work, but that is going to be 44 biceps working their way towards the safe room, really, with nothing else to worry about. With everyone slow, really good job by them on conserving those pills and also saying, you know what, even though we have a couple slow, we can deal with these hits. 1,940 points for their total, with another just about a 1,000 point map, as you mentioned, Dragon. Yeah. That averaging score, plus the fact that they got a, a brilliant wipe on the first map as well. I mean, 44 biceps are seeing pretty. I just want to mention, actually, that the funny thing about the, the incident that happened with the ladder show with Coach, um, it's like the tongue broke coincided with the spitter scratching Coach. I'm not saying the spitter like probably was the one who caused that to happen, but it was kind of humorous how that happened at exactly the same time. Yeah, it was really, really unfortunate because that could have been close to an in-cap because they had the spit separating them in terms of the survivors. I mean, Envy now are going to have to try to match that on their survivor side. As we do see this first hit going in, that Hunter is going to land on the coach after a brief smoker pull on to Nick. With that spit going down, Boomer is going to go last, but only about 13 damage on that hit. Pretty cleanly taken, but Dragon, this tank is going to have to be dealt with in that open area by Envy. They cannot afford to have happen again what happened on that first map. Yeah, in a matchup such as this, where both teams are sort of expected to perform at an equal level, like, if you're giving away a huge deficit in points like they did in map one, like, it's it's already bad news. And so, they've got to try super hard now to just preserve that bonus at all costs. Indeed they do. This next hit is a pretty strong one, though, from 44 Biceps. Hunter, Spitter, Jockey, and Charger setting up for when the survivors are going to be moving their way forward, I believe. It's kind of something that you can do on the Special Infected side in terms of funneling them into this area. If that Charger manages to land this rocket, it could be huge. Envy are wise to this as well, though, working their way forward. One survivor's pretty split. In the back, there's the Hunter landing onto Ellis, and here comes the stack. That's going to be the stumble that goes onto Ellis from that, and as well, there is that jockey in the back. Not a whole lot of damage, though, going out onto Ellis, which I think is fortunate, but that was a good example of how SI teams, even after they land that pounce, instead of going for an intercept with that charger, they go for the stumble instead and just get as much spit damage as possible. Guitar here. Yeah, I honestly was surprised that Five I didn't take more spit damage because uh, the SI played that well, as you said, with the stumble. Um, but I, I think Five I, in a sense, was lucky to get away with as little as he did in that sense of damage. Indeed, we we have the hunter landing in front, smoker briefly in the back, but that was another two-two. Looks as though that's going to get Envy what they want for this tank spawn on the special infected side of things. Here it is, and who is it in the hands of? Uh, I'm sorry, I probably butchered his name. I was just going with the acronym SS or S V R. Yeah, S V R V is the way to say that. I'm fairly sure this tank is hitting his hittables onto the roof, though. One of them is in a decent spot now, flying over that barricade, and the other one is up top in a kind of iffy situation. That forklift is on top of the train track, that concrete train track that we see up top. That dumpster is going to go flying in as well. This hit's going to be a Charger Jockey and a Hunter, which is actually the SI setup that we saw Envy commit with, but we have a Ceiling Pouncing Hunter going around oh. above the dumpster. That dumpster's rolling, actually, and that's going to be a 23 damage pounce from the ceiling onto that Jockeyed Survivor. Pretty nice hit for that, and the tank is now still positioning these hittables in the best way that he can, but Envy see exactly where he's at, and they're going to be playing a bit more aggressive Dragon, as you see, those Uzi have already gotten almost 500 chip down onto him. Yeah, I think Envy is saying, like, enough silly games now. They just suffered a, a 22 damage pounce. Um, you know, enough's enough. They need to be aggressive and 
at press forward, try and chip this tank as much as possible, which I've already done so. And he's already a second pass, I might add. A 65% frustration, now 60%. He's now starting to work that for all single boom going ahead onto uh, Ellis at the back. And he's now bringing these hitables in. There's three in total to play with. And that fork is going. Oh, oh, six head! Oh no, this is about to be disastrous for Envy! Ooh. There's the dumpster hit onto both Coach and Rochelle. One survivor left being flyby. The Charger is going to miss. Oh my goodness, that is utterly, utterly horrible for Team Envy. That tank by SVRV, right? SZRV just absolutely destroyed NV with those hittables. That single boom caused a little bit of confusion, I think, on Survivor's side, but 44 biceps have utterly brought this game to an already impressive delta, right, of just a under 1,600 points in two areas where it is super unfortunate for a Survivor team to wipe. And the first map, it was just that triple boom plus support. That time it was hittables, and that free hittable landing is something you can absolutely not have happen in that area. Just one of those areas where, in a high stakes game such as this, like no survivor team really should be wiping there. I mean, that's that's going to be the default position of any team that that plays in a sort of match like this, especially on that part of the map. Um, I have been informed that uh, the player's name I could not pronounce correctly is actually Veres. Veres, okay. Good. Thank you. That's good. Performing with that, Okay, well, that tank wipe was, first of all, incredible. And second, now Team Envy are going to have to get, you know, at this tank, it's what, 53? Okay, so this is actually one of my favorite tanks in the game just because it spawns outside, can be a rock tank, and then you can take him back in the tunnels. But being down by almost 1,600 points going into map three when it's a four map campaign, right, in terms of the tournament, this is going to require Envy on their home server, right? to play pretty much immaculately, because that's what we've seen from 44 biceps so far, averaging 1k points uh, pretty much every chapter and getting two wipes already in the best ways possible. I mean, this is already looking, I don't want to say it's dire for Envy quite yet, but it's getting to that point where they need to absolutely step it up on Special Infected and try to get a lot of damage in these tunnels. Let's see if 44 biceps can stop that, however, as we are just seeing bears cancel the ready up. And after that, they're going to be dealing with a pretty strong hit here, but they've been playing immaculately almost on Survivor side, so they might have a good opportunity to shut that down in the same way. It's going to be a Smoker, Charger, Jockey, and Spitter for this first hit, and as soon as Vare's ready up, we will be able to take this live. Yeah, I mean, if, if MV can just get at least one wipe and take advantage of that in terms of the points deficit, then... They've done a lot to mitigate the damage in that sense, and they've, you know, they've still got a lot to play for when it comes to their home server. So, even though it looks really bleak after just the first two chapters, it's by no means over just yet. Yeah, and now as we're going live here, let's see if 44 Biceps can continue this momentum against that 3-1. Obviously, the game is nowhere close to being over yet as well. That's what we're kind of seeing in chat, but... I would say that this kind of start is the best you could also hope for. So let's see what can happen on this first hit. That's going to be a dead smoker. A charger oh. managing to land, though, onto Coach. That is going to be a decent amount of damage onto him. That almost looked like another shutdown going out when the smoker got killed. But that charge spit really does help Envy's case. Yeah, almost hitting 40 total damage on that first hit. I mean, I've always said, like, for many years, that if you as an SI team can average about well, say average, about 40 damage per hit. You know, that's quite impressive SI play overall. I mean, you might only get like 10 or 20 one hit and then land a massive hit of the next, like 80 or 100. It still averages about 40 in a sense. So that's a good first hit for uh, NV. They just need to keep it up. Indeed, they do. The next hit is going to be a 3-1 with that boomer as the survivors are working their way close to the swan room. It's going to be a charger, hunter, smoker, and the aforementioned boomer for NV. If they can send this in here and get any kind of separation on the survivors, maybe from in between and also from behind as they're kind of setting up, this would be big for them. Hunter is going to land onto Ellis. That charger is going to whiff. Nice bunny hop, however, from that boomer to get that two survivor proxy. It's really about the drop here, though, I would say, Dragon, because any kind of damage they can get beforehand might make the survivors too you know, basically have to LOS this tank really, really well outside first. And obviously, if you chip it well enough, you can back up into the tunnel. But I might expect 44 biceps to stay outside just because the tunnel is such an unforgiving area. 
it's unforgiving plus i mean the wisdom behind that sort of decision with uh team mv having red pings which will help their arms when it comes to their tank play that's for sure uh yeah i think if i was uh 44 biceps i'd rather take it outside if that's possible be a smoker spitter jockey and a hunter for the drop hit here looks as though the smoker and hunter are setting up in the back of the tunnel with the jockey and spitter in the front coach looks like to be the one who's going to drop first potentially to clear out some of this common or they could drop everyone at the same time they are going to drop coach as this bane timer is now engaged jockey jumping around trying to land and there is the pull pounce and spit going out but that spit was actually in front of the survivors that did not land on the pounce i yeah uh, i'm not sure if the way the survivors handled that was the correct way. I mean, it was it was expecting a lot on Coach's shoulders to basically handle most of that hit the way it unfolded. And inevitably, he took quite a bit of damage, and so did Nick as well after the jockey landed. Indeed they did, and now we do have another 3-1 with that boomer up right before this tank is due to spawn. Hunter, Smoker, and Charger for the pinners on this hit. Survivors making their way forward, about to spawn this tank. The only thing that could really do a massive amount of damage to them here, it would be that separation outside, but we've seen some extremely quick clears from 44 biceps so far. As this charger jumps in, not going to land, however, as Kane is going to most likely be the tank that we're going to see spawn up right at the bottom of the coaster. Indeed, it is Kane's tank, and he is in a spot where he can be chipped pretty hard, but he notices this right away and is actually going to be backing up on the coaster, climbing his way as well, out of harm's way. He's kind of just sitting here for a second, making sure the survivors can't really see him because the distances of this range dragon can do a lot of damage. Oh, you are correct, Rails. They do indeed have three standard Uzis. There is a boomer trying, but getting popped. Um, tank finally makes his way. And I see what you mean. He's already taken, like, it's only just over 200 chip, but that's, that's more than I've ever known Uzis to do from that distance to the boss. Exactly, and I think on map one what we saw is the tank was just far away enough to where he was at the 1% damage range before the survivors were able to chip him, but that's why he's being as careful as he is across these rooftops. In the next version of Zone Mod, the Uzis are not this powerful, but this is a situation where you can deeply, deeply abuse that if you know exactly how to do it. The survivors are working their way back towards the tunnel, it would seem, potentially for LOS, but they're actually going to maybe try to take him inside. We see Nick getting even more chip right there just by himself. Charger, Hunter, Jockey for this hit. Charger's going to get melted, and Kane is on second pass already. He's going to have to maybe keep some sight or go in well before deck spawn is all the way up. And there's nothing stopping them for so I was just pulling back, but they're always taking a chip just to keep the last fragments of uh, LOS on the survivors. He's having to push in. He's sunk up so much chip already. Oh, the jockey lands. And he gets Nick to the corner. The SI have got to help him now. Oh, he's going to spread the hit. He's going to spread the love, but he missed the punch. And the smoker lands on Nick. Nick is down. Oh, and survivors get stuck in the roof. That was Ellis. He spread the love really well, actually, by tank, but um, I don't know. I just, I think MV could have handled that a lot better if they'd just been more patient with their spawns, I think, Rails. They might have been trying for a boomer as well after that charger went in, but yeah, they didn't have a whole lot of time to be able to do that as he was just getting railed with those Uzis down the tunnel at the same point in time. This is going to be an interesting hit for the drop. That Boomer does get a single proxy out onto Coach. Jockey, Spitter, and Charger for the rest. I think they would really like a Smoker here because that's the way you can set up some really, really precarious circumstances for the survivors. Jockey also works, but I wouldn't be surprised to see 44 Biceps say, okay, the Boomer's dead. Let's push up right before they get this next hit and it's not going to be a smoker it's going to be that hunter for flyby at the same point in time and because the event does indeed still run out in this version of zone mod we're going to see them probably hang out for a bit at the bottom they have three people bleeding however so they can't stay here a whole long time but they might be doing it just to clear the first part of this common before working their way up the ramp yeah i mean if i were nv i'd be calling for patience now just knowing that three of them are bleeding and like you've got a massive opportunity on this hit to you know hold uh, 44 biceps in their tracks and pull something back for yourselves in this match. Jockey is coming in from the front. Hunter lands a damage bounce at the back. Oh, and a charger lands with it. But it's not a, it's not like an in-cap charge or anything like that. It's just a damage charge. I don't know. I think that might have been a good move, honestly, on Envy's part, because you see how these survivors are about to have maybe two people slow. Bears and also Hair are going to be at a difficult position if this coaster keeps going on with any kind of damage. And there's the free spit attempting to go in. 
separating coach just for a couple seconds. It's going to be a smoker, boomer, spitter, and a jockey for this hit. The boomer does get a single boom in the front as well. But as you can see, everybody is kind of around that 50 HP range, aside from Antax, who is going to be able to keep working his way forward. Smoker spawns up there onto coach, not going to land as the jockey does manage to land for a couple split seconds onto theirs, but... This spitter is going to keep itself alive for the rest of this, and if 44 biceps manage to find a way to make this safe room, even though they have a couple people slow, they can be a really tough team to get down, even with this health. So, they are making quick work of the rest of the coaster. It's going to be a Charger Hunter spitter, and one more spawn for MV is going to be that Boomer, so this has some decent damage potential, Dragon. Oh, oh Hunter got Ski is so fast, Charger got Focus on Hardcore, Boomer gets Pop. Poor Spitter, poor Kimchi can't really do much of anything with that. And now, I mean, I get the idea behind saving the spitter to be able to get these kinds of damage hits, but honestly, I would maybe be happier with the quad just in this circumstance. The survivors are going to be able to hold out a good deal of the horde inside here. If they get a charge spit, they might be able to make it work, but holding on to that is going to get them a hunter, jockey, smoker, tri-cap for this next hit. The survivors are in absolutely no rush, despite the bleed. They've already killed almost all the common, only 75 remaining, and this actually might be another hit that we see as the spitter is just trying to get this kind of free spit damage. I don't know about that strategy though, Dragon. I don't think it's I, I don't I don't think it's working in an area quite like this. It's not, but then again there's horde coming from the front as well, which is slowing the survivors down furthermore. And they're still bleeding out, but they're now saying they hit in with more spit. And <laughs> again the survivors are, oh, obviously they can't rush through now, but they they're biding their time. The spit is coming in to block even more. And they, the other two survivors at the back can't run for the puddle just yet. More Horde is incoming. And I don't know, maybe Kimchi's played a, a master stroke here. Maybe he's delayed them enough where he gets to spawn up. Oh, the jockey got dead stop though. And the smoker got destroyed. Uh, it seems like 44 Biceps are playing the patient game better than NVR at the moment. I agree with that 100%. Charger is going to jump in and does get cleared. Just a boomer now in the spawn queue for Kimchi. Dropping down, getting M2'd, not finding a proxy either. And this should be 44 biceps making the safe room with this bonus still. They have 78% damage bonus and 16.4% health bonus, so long as the spitter doesn't find anything here. The spit is going to go in, but Rochelle is outside of it. Coach does take just a bit more on to that health bonus but it's just chip damage as the survivors will be working their way in 44 biceps 2892 points on their home server so far it has been domination on their special infected side really that's allowed them to get this kind of delta exactly 2500 points separating these two teams working into envy's half and i don't know dragon this coaster event with high ping is just the opposite of fun Oh, this is... I mean, to them, this might as well be torturing the Chinese concentration camp. I mean, it's just... <laughs> I mean, where do NV go from here in terms of, you know, mitigating the, the damage dealt on this server? I don't know. I mean, and they have the option of fighting the tank outside, right? Which I think might be better for them just in this situation with that higher ping, but... Each. They have to get a few close-range shutdowns going into this, and the Spitter, Jockey, Charger, and Smoker are going to be the first hit for NV. They can definitely do damage on this first hit, as long as that Jockey is able to get some kind of either distraction or land from the back. The Bane Timer is already out, and that is one thing that I think has really forced NV to change their playstyle from back in the day, because that Bane Timer makes you go forward a certain amount, whether you are ready or not. Smoker's gonna spawn getting a pull onto Nick. Charger goes in, pull charge spit, and the jockey lands onto Coach. That is exactly what I was talking about with that hit, and oh my goodness, Dragon, they already have over, let's see, close to 70 damage after that first hit. It's actually 75 damage, almost 80. That's almost two average hits worth of damage in the first hit alone. Like, 44 Biceps are truly, like, doing everything they can on their home server, and rightfully so. I mean, against a team like Envy, you need to create all the advantages that you can, and do not waste a single opportunity. Um, you know, hats off to 44 Biceps in that regard, but this is leaving Envy in a real black hole of sorts. They just need to... They need to find a bit of their old selves and just show it. Just bring it out. Here comes a hit. Hunter is pouncing around. Does get shut down. Jockey gets shut down. Charger really got shut down as well. Boomer lands a triple boom. Albeit all the capping SI had already been dealt with. 
Um, yeah, I mean, a much better defense this time from MV, but it's still only an early way in this chapter, Rails. Yeah, and this is now, depending on when that charger died in that hit, they might be facing another charge spit as they drop. It's going to be a smoker, spitter, hunter, and the last spawn for Vares is going to be a jockey, so no charger, but still a pretty devastating hit, especially with these common and that spit damage potential. Looks as though the hunter is already pre-spawned as well. Wall kicking up top and getting blown out of the sky by the survivors, so one spawn will be down, and I think that'll probably trigger Envy to kill these common pretty fast and then drop. They are going to have some more to deal with in the front, however, and Getting common locked in spit here is not out of the question, obviously. I think Antax might be able to get a spawn up before they go. This jockey's already pre-spawned. We have one survivor now. That being, it looks as though Nick dropping, getting pulled, but the tongue does get cleared as this jockey is going to go in, and this oh, is going to no. be a <laughs> massive amount of damage onto deck. Oh my goodness, and the charger is going to land as well. Dragon, that's what I was worried about for them. Even though they just got that charger spawn into queue, the smoker and the jockey set that up beautifully. Envy, I mean, I know it's their away server for them, but they do seem somewhat deflated at the same time. I just think they've had the wind knocked out of their sails from the first two chapters, and it's almost like they don't know what to do with themselves. Um, like, survival now is absolutely paramount. If they don't survive this tank, or don't survive this event, I I fail to see how they can make it a real comeback in their away server. It, it's just getting to that point now. It really is. The Boomer, Charger, Jockey, and Hunter are the next setup for Team 44 Biceps. Boomer is pre-spawned outside on top of the roof, looking to get some kind of arc boom onto them as they go forward, but they have to be very careful here because they are also very close to that tank spawn. Charger, Jockey, Hunter for the rest of the hit. Probably looking to just have everything rocket off this roof or get some kind of pounce. The survivors are outside now with that boomer getting popped nicely by Kane. Jockey gets dead stopped. Hunter goes in, does get skeeted, but there is a charge onto deck for just a second. That was much better in terms of the shutdown, and honestly, taking one in cap so far from some of these indoor hits with that kind of ping, they might be happy to see that. Oh. As the tank is going to spawn into the hands of Antax, and he's going to get railed as he does spawn there already for just about 226 damage on that. They know he's there, too. He's going to have to transition out and take a good amount of damage from those Uzis. Jockey Smoker Boomer may be looking to help him transition here. Let's see if they manage to get this as the tank is now going to be climbing up on the side. Nobody looking at him until exactly right now. Getting a bit more chip from that range with the distance Uzis, but the smoker is also in a position where he could get killed. And indeed, that's going to be a quick pull with a single boom as this tank is still looking to actually <laughs> land a rock onto deck. Deck knew that rock was coming at him. He tried skeeting it, but the skeet did not land, and he just ate that rock in the face. Indeed, he did, and now this tank is still getting shot by those Uzis, but they do have one survivor bleeding at the exact same time. Hunter Charger Jockey, maybe for the commit hit, as the tank is going to transition and try to climb up, potentially on this roof where the Hunter is as well. The survivors are working their way backward, but oh, this no. Jockey's gonna oh. land onto Kane. There's the clear, however. Now this tank is down one SI, as he's gonna get a punch there onto Rochelle. Charger also is not going to land, so Antax is alone as he's going to be trying to get some more damage out onto Deck, who is going to go down. He will be black and white now. The Hunter lands onto Rochelle. Curve Rock is going to also land onto Kimchi from inside. The tank is almost dead, but the survivors just don't have the angle on him right now to finish him off. He's going to knock that door as well. This boom's going to go in, and a punch goes out onto Kane. Antax with a hell of a tank in this area so far, trying to curve another rock around the corner. Smoker pull manages to land onto Rochelle. It does get cleared. The tank is so low, and Envy know it, but they can't quite kill him as this jockey's gonna land onto a boom survivor. That rock also almost landed, I swear. But now the tank is indeed going to almost die as Ellis is gonna get rocked! Oh my god, that curve rock was absolutely incredible. This 9 HP tank dragon, so much work being done. I don't think Envy realized how close they were in every sense of that, that what just unfolded there. <laughs> With just 9 HP, I mean, they must have known he was, like, close to death. But if, uh, if Kimchi, sorry, if Kane had landed one more SMG bullet, he could have prevented that rock. God, and that curve rock on Ellis was literally, like, at one of the toughest angles I think I've seen. Like, he fully just managed to whip that all the way around that corner into the hallway for even more damage and now this hit for 44 biceps is also pretty deadly charger hunter boomer and spitter for this hit let's see if they are able to 
mitigate damage here on the survivor side, but there's the pounce landing onto deck. Charger is also looking for him, pulling him back almost into spit. He is black and white, so Kimchi's gonna have to give those pills to him almost as soon as possible. The Spitter is going to be keeping itself alive as well in the hands of Antax, but Envy have made it past the Coaster Choke, at least for the moment, and are getting some distance on this map. Dragon, we mentioned that they couldn't afford to wipe again, and this is actually their best Survivor performance so far here on map 3. Yeah, well, Dark Carnival, map 3, this has always been like the key chapter of like Dark Carnival its entirety, because so many things can go one way or the other. Um, you know, even if you're a team that's behind, you can regain momentum if you play this one correctly. 16 damage, pounce up top on Ellis. Smoker and Jockey both trying to go for Nick, who is black and white. Um, they do free deck, and they clear the, they destroy the spitter. The Smoker's hiding behind the bush or tree there. Um, Envy needs to get a move on, though. We need to get a serious move on. They really do. I mean, that Smoker is still up behind those bushes. They have 150 commons, so half of the event still to deal with. Charger and Boomer going to be up in the queue for this next drop. Another pretty strong hit, I would say, just because the survivors are going to be trying to fight the rest of this horde. With that high ping, it's a Jockey Smoker Charger for the Penners. Boomer spawns up and gets a nice double boom in front. Smoker's going to get a pull into the front as well, but actually that is going to be cleared by Flyby before any other incident onto deck. They're going to be passing pills, I think, soon, too, just because deck is going to be black and white still at that 40 HP. But with that Smoker dead, Jockey and Charger are going to be working their way in. M2 going out by Rochelle onto the Jockey, and then they do get the clear. But Kimchi is at one here, Dragon, about to go down in the middle of the rest of these commons. Yeah, indeed. Um, and, of course, because he's battling with the Red Thing as well, he's going to have a hard time fighting off the commons just to make sure the 1 HP does go. Oh, the Spitter actually missed the spit completely. Um, that might be a bit of a slip up there from 44 Biceps. Um, they could have just copied what Kimchi Spitter did in the last round and just delay them, but old Boomer tried going in for a proxy, didn't work. He got uh, shoved away and blown up. They've only got two spawns right now with Smoker Hunter. There is one coming up now for Veras, which is a Charger. Oh, so it can, this can still be dangerous. This is, this is really, really uncertain moment here for uh, Envy. Charger coming in, gets destroyed right away. Hunter lands on Nick, who's black and white, and they're nowhere near, or does get cleared though by Ellis. And this is decent for them now, as they are getting almost all these distance points. There is still just a bit of bonus left on Flyby too, so if they can make their way into the safe room with this, that would be extraordinary. As we see, Ellis and Nick are already positioned out here to where they want to keep going, but that jockey is going to get the down onto Rochelle. Boomer and Spitter both trying to go for him at the same time, that being coached in the back. Flyby is going to get jockeyed, but then instantaneously cleared by Kane. Here comes the Charger, though. Magic to get the end cap onto him following that hit on Coach. And now that Boomer is going to get a nice triple boom in the front. Rest of this horde has been dead, but now the Boomer horde is going to be what they have to deal with. They're still alive, though, in this spot, and they know spawns are coming up soon. This smoker could be extremely detrimental to them, but even with just one quick clear, they could make it to the safe room, potentially, for the first time on this server. Smoker pool does go out. It does get instantaneously cleared. And Dragon, this is closer to what we were expecting in terms of Envy on away. They're getting all these distance points and still making bonus. Indeed, and uh, now they're starting to sort of feel a bit more like how they used to play way in the bars, like... They're punishing the SI when they're going in solo, um, and they're going to make the save from despite this ping, unless something really untoward happens in this final hit. Um, there is a Spitter Charger, third spawn coming up, which is a Boomer. Spitter's just trying to delay. Um, where exactly is Nick? Nick is still outside. He's trying to block the uh, tree spawn. He's finally inside. Boomer's in. They're all in, and Charger was a bit too late to the party. But at last rate, they finally made the save from on the way server. Yeah, and that's honestly, like, of the maps we had so far, with the map 1 tank being on the bridge and the map 2 tank being in Kitty Land and both of those being wipes, like, those were, I think, easier maps to make. But MV managed to make it on the safe room here. On the... One of the harder chapters, I think, in the entire campaign, just because they managed to kill 300 common with that ping, plus make it the entire way. If they can do some damage here on Special Infected side, this could become a very close game extremely fast, but it's going to be up to this tank to do some great amount of work on the Special Infected side for Envy. We'll see exactly where it's going to spawn, because this will be extremely important. It is going to be at 21%, so it's the early tank. Hittables are going to be in play. 
There are lots of rocket spawns for the SI, and the survivors are going to have to play this extremely cleanly because this can go awry for them extremely fast. But it's going to be, I think, Dex Tank for Envy as well. So that's the player with the lowest ping on their team. He's rocking 158 compared to the 253 to 244 of the rest of the SI. But it's going to be 1 to 4 as well for those asking. We're not doing Finale on this. So especially that's something where in a home and away game, right, that is something I think that's better. So I would be surprised to see these teams actually want to play Finale as well, just with a whole other server in front of us. But as soon as Vares is back and able to ready up, we will be able to take this live once again. Envy looking to do a decent amount of damage on this first hit. It's going to be a triple cap with the Jockey Smoker Charger and this Boomer for support. We are live here. And actually, sorry, not Dex Tank, Kimchi's Tank. That is going to be the player who has to do a good amount of work on this. Kane's gonna rocket that boomer and get a double boom. Probably force the survivors to stay in the safe room for a bit longer, just so that then they can get that last spawn up, which you're probably gonna hope to get a spitter in this scenario. So, a few seconds away from the last spawn, there's an 1,876 point deficit for NV just for after three chapters. Um, it's very difficult to sort of make that Oh, like a win on their home server. The hits coming in. Hunter and Jockey both landing in a trika. Oh my goodness. This is devastating for 44 biceps, and they aren't clearing this pull still in the back. That's going to be so much damage going out onto Rochelle. Okay, so after that last map, I think that was a big confidence booster for Envy as well, making the safe room. Let's see what Kimchi is able to do with this tank. He had a completely brilliant tank in the quarterfinals last week where he was able to turn the tide of that game as well. This hittable is going to be flying all the way up, going to be landing on the roof, and it's going to tumble into play on that right-hand side, but he's going to have to do some work to get that second dumpster going all the way in, Ooh. not managing to land, but these are some nice hittable hits that we're seeing from him. Charger Hunter and Boomer for the support. The tank is already on the roof. Let's see if they are able to send a hit of some kind or if he's just going to be rolling this straight in. Looks as though he's going for that dumpster on the right-hand side as the rest of the SI hit. Rock going to be thrown. Nice charge going out. Rock is not going to land. We do see a single boom, and there's the hittable rocket again, but it's not going to land. Dragon, that was so close to disaster there. Absolutely, but like, Kimchi, I think he's definitely by far the most experienced of the whole MV crew. I mean, I remember watching him play a scrim one time against Rutabixes of all teams, like, like a decade ago. So, like, if any tank player is going to do something here, he has to rely on the most experienced member of the crowd. Absolutely. Looks like we're going to get another rock attempt going out here, though, as that rock is going to land right into the sign instead of actually hitting a survivor. Boomer got a single boom, and you know what? This is the thing. The survivors do have the chip Uzis, right? But they are doing a good... They have one with a chip Uzi and two with silenced Uzis, so they are going to be trying to get maybe some chip on this tank after another hit goes in, but he's keeping free sight onto Coach, who's doing chrome shotgun chip to him. It's going to be a Hunter, Smoker, and Charger for this next support. Let's see if they're able to send this in as well. Hunter bouncing its way in as the rest of the hit goes in onto Coach, who's going to be the target for this rock, but it's not going to land. He does manage to get out of the way. Now the Smoker pull is going to go in, but it wasn't able to land in sync with the tank. He's going to maybe be looking for a boomer onto this, and he hasn't really taken a whole lot of ship at all. But the, uh, the SI are still in a, in a decent position, really. I mean, after that first hit, one of them is already bleeding. Um, it's going to run slow. Uh, they got Kimchi's tank still above 5k HP. Got plenty of hittables to work with, both you know, on ground and in the bumper car area. Um, this is actually a really tentative moment here for... Oh, Boom's coming in! Single pro, single pro. Oh! Oh! Oh my god, that bumper car, holy shit, that's going to be a long arm going out onto Rochelle. That was incredible. That happened so fast as 44 biceps are working their way now back to the safe room. That is exactly what Team Envy were looking for. Tank is going back now into the bumper cars. I think he's going to maybe look for the kill onto those two survivors and indeed... That's the death on to Ellis. He's going to pound Nick to death here at the same point in time. Kimchi doing absolute work. I mentioned the tank he had last week. This one is even more consequential than that one. Just two survivors left. Going to have a three cap for his support. Charge is going to land a double charge. And that is the white dragon going out. Kimchi has done it again. Kimchi is like the angel. It's like Mr. Miyagi. He's, he is the Mr. Miyagi of Team MV. I'm calling it. 
That was something where now, okay, 70 points on your home server for map 4, and it's right now just about 1900, but that lead even right now I don't consider to be completely safe for the next game, because Envy are absolutely amazing on their home server most of the time. And now, with this kind of momentum, if we see Envy survive this tank, right, that would be one of the best turnarounds I think we possibly could have seen, just because of how map 1 and 2 went. If map 3 and 4 can get them within, like, 1,500 points, like, if they can score just, like, four or 500 points on this map, just distance, they're immediately in a much better position. They just have to shut down this tank, and Fayex is going to have to do a lot of work on this, obviously, at the same point in time. There is a charge going out, at, and that's almost a triple cap with that smoker. The smoker did die, but that's a lot of damage going oh, out no. onto deck and also flyby. Both teams getting a really nice hit out of the safe room on this map. Tank is up now into the hands of Fayex, and Dragon, he's going for those dumpsters as well. What for Kimchi, so... Of course, he's going to try and do the same thing. That dumpster, though, where is that go? Ooh! I thought that might have gone for Nick, but luckily it deflected away from him. Um, he's bringing in the third dumpster now. So both dumpsters, uh, there's two dumpsters right next to each other. There's one still... Oh, it's on the, the lower part of the roof, and that flies right away. Um, he's actually not going to bother with that, so he's one few to hit him. Boomer does go in a single boom on Rochelle. Is he actually going to try going in? No, he's just throwing rocks. I was wondering, if he was to commit with a single boom, especially when the horse is so far away, here comes a damage power, so look at that hunter on the skybox. Oh, he narrowly misses it, lands in the tree, does get a pounce onto coach, but gets cleared. That was not well timed for the tank there and his rock, and it gets skeeted. No, it was not. I mean, I don't know what he exactly wants for support here. He has a charger and jockey, and maybe he's going to get a boomer next, but... He really might need help from his special infected as well to set up those hittables that are in the back. But Envy are going to look to rail him before that even becomes a problem. It is going to be a smoker for the last spawn. He's about to go second pass. Still getting chipped for a little bit of sight. And they are going to send another hit in. Jockey's going to land. Smoker lands. And that's going to be a rock landing as well. Onto deck with that charger as well. Getting the follow-up charge for the in cap. Unfortunately, deck is going to be now bleeding for this. And the tank... Very nice for 44 biceps so far. Throwing another rock, managing to land it onto Kimchi. This is what they really can't afford to have happen in this area. Rocks that are going under Rochelle as well. Faix is doing an incredible amount of damage just with these rocks. And it's because the weak part for any team when you're on ping, especially with these new rocks, that is what you cannot afford to have happen because he got his frustration back. Still on 5k, and now Envy are going to have to be careful of this SI hit. Hunter is going to land onto Ellis with a boom off of that as well. Rock is going to go in, not going to land. Jockey looking for something too, but the tank still doing a great amount of damage from this, and that Rock almost landed as the Jockey lands. They're packed into the bumper cars right now, Dragon. Well, they've got no choice. They're eating rocks. They need to force Fex into a t difficult position. But... At the moment, the SI are playing the patient game. They're still playing it rather patiently, and it's working wonders for them. Now they're starting to pull back away from the bumper car area. Oh, yeah. I mean, they managed to get a decent amount of damage onto that tank at this point. He is on second pass. And Envy are going into the safe room, I believe, to get ammo as the tank is here. This could be extremely unfortunate for them. There's the charger landing, plus the smoke. The hunter's going in for the triple cap, landing another punch now onto deck, but his SI support is now dead. Envy have to make mincemeat of the rest of this tank. Those Uzis are going ham onto him as he's going to be climbing out. And that's an in-cap onto deck in the corner. He is black and white off of this tank fight. Our rock is trying to land, but nothing doing so far. Envy need to push and kill this tank without eating another rock, hopefully for them, as he is now going to get pushed on the right-hand side from Rochelle. So very, very importantly, Dragon, lots of damage going out, but not a wipe. Not a wipe, but this, this is it. This is where the, the game starts to come back in now. This is where it becomes a closer affair. Like, Team Envy... When it really mattered, they did what they had to do. They just had to survive. Like, especially after the wipe, that's it now. They're already making the deficit back. And this is exactly what, this is what's going to feed the momentum. It's going to give them that morale boost they need. Um, and if they can get this within 1500 deficit, it really is game on rails.
Exactly, and I think that might be what we're seeing here, but it's a beautiful double cap in the back with that smoker and charger. The hunter landed in front. This is a lot of damage going out onto NV to state the obvious. As Kane is the last survivor with permanent HP, going to get cleared as the spitter is still scratching around. They already have gotten that delta down to just about 1,800 points now, and they're going to keep moving their way forward. Having won this map on the away server, they just need to not eat as many hits here. As deck is trying to clear as many common as possible with his fire axe. Ammo, I think, is going to be a question for them as well as they keep working their way forward. Boomer does get a proxy boom on to Coach as NB are going to be forced to back up in this area to kill those common. Jockey bouncing around the left-hand side is going to get killed. Charger's going in, landing onto deck He's into the corner. He is black and white, but they do clear that after just one pound. Hunter going out onto him as well, and that's another example Coach we saw. Help. Coach needs help, or he's gonna go down to commons. At two, and Kane, like, that's an example, though, what we just saw there with that Charger and Hunter. They're just stacking as much damage as they possibly can. They need to get through the barns, and then they need to manage to make some of these distance points on the roof. Smoker goes in, getting the end cap onto Rochelle. Rest of the survivors are doing with a spit, and Deck is barely going to live that. Jumping up on the railing, and then it proxies him. Oh my god. <laughs> into spit. Oh my goodness. Jockey going in to get something onto Coach at the same time. This is going to be a really interesting match now, Dragon, because I don't believe this lead is particularly safe going into Envy's server. Even if they die right just here... Just get distance points. That's all they can do. Just get distance points. There's no point trying to salvage that. Exactly. There's the Hunter with the Scratch and the Charger with the Scratch as well. That is the good half coming out as we're going to be moving to Team Envy's server next. Just about a 1,723... No. Third... All right. 2,713 yes, points. Yes, yeah. Alright, so that's what we have to remember. 1713 going into that next. It's a decent lead, but in absolutely no way untouchable. And honestly, Dragon, for the second half of this game, I think the momentum was actually sort of on the side of Envy because they were able to make that safe room on map three and then they won map four. Um I would say if it was beyond 1800 or 2000, like it would definitely be 44 biceps is a uh, game to lose. I don't think they would have done, but um, 1713, that's, it's hard. It's not easy, but that's workable. I think if the momentum shift that we saw sort of took place, then maybe Envy can pull it back with the difference in ping accounted for. But it's really difficult to just tell right now. It is. I mean, with four maps, it's 100% doable, but they are going to need to play an amazing survivor game, I would say. And uh, that tank on map four is very, very livable as well. Like, that wipe by Kimji was completely nuts and exactly what they needed, especially on that high ping, right? But on their home server, there is no... I mean, I, I can see them making every map. That's the thing about it, because they're going to be on the green ping, they're going to be able to do exactly what they need to, and like 44 biceps special infected on high ping is about to be tested in a way that it really really needs to stack up to what Envy just did on that away server. I mean scoring about 1300 points when you're on that kind of ping like that's understandable but 44 biceps are going to really need to bring it on the special infected especially with those tanks to keep Envy under control. Absolutely I think um well it depends I mean have they got a lot of experience with red pings on um, 44 biceps as, as a tournament provide them a lot of away games in that regard. Yeah, I mean, they have done a great job through this tournament, right? Especially since they've become one of the teams to beat. Like, getting to that number two seed, they also had a decent amount of experience playing together as a team before this. They're not an old team, but they're also not inexperienced when it comes to all these situations. I don't know exactly how they're going to do particularly on this game, just because it is a little bit different. Plus, I, I don't know exactly what they're going to get in terms of ping, but Envy were dealing with some pretty rough, you know, between 230 and 245 there on that away server for them. I'm expecting it to be reciprocal for 44 biceps, but it really is going to come down to their team cohesion, which I think has been amazing in this tournament. When they played against Rehab on that single game in the EU first, right, like that was a pretty close affair on Pacifice. So it's a different kind of context for them in this area, but it really is going to come down to those hittables, exactly like we saw for two wipes in that last game, one by Envy and one by 44 Biceps uh, on the second map for them, though, on the fourth map for Envy. So in a nutshell, it's like this is as experienced as it's going to get, but I don't know if they're 100% happy with the idea that they have to defend that 1,700-point lead. You know, in a situation that Envy just, you know, <clears throat> pretty much made their way back into the game after two of those maps. So momentum-wise, 
I think it'll depend on what happens on map one, because Envy are going to be looking to really punish that tank at the bridge location. If they can get the same kind of light 44 biceps did, we're going to be right back into this. So um, I've already connected to the Asian server. Um, I've been told that that uh, player swap you mentioned that could happen is indeed happening. I think it's Prove who's playing for Envy. Uh, he's connecting from Korea. So who is he swapping with? He might be swapping with Deck. I'm not 100% sure though. The thing about that player swap, right, is as long as the person has the same ping on the home server that the person who they're replacing would, then it's 100% fine. Um, that's something where it's like, you do, you wouldn't want somebody to swap out before an away game where it's like, okay, this person's gonna have better ping than the person who was playing on this server. But in this particular circumstance, since we already saw the away server played, it shouldn't really matter that much. And let's see exactly who he is gonna be replacing. I expect to see Kane joining soon and also kimchi right so kimchi's already here that's pretty decent and then um i'm curious and they should set they should set the tank i don't know if they're gonna want to set scores but maybe it looks like they're going to and honestly like that's down to the teams i don't mind if either team does that but at the same point in time the thing about that is that that automatically puts a certain amount of pressure onto the team that's leading because then if you get 1700 points right now right 1713 in your advantage they are going to almost play the uh, like, like they're gonna have to play the game perpetually from behind if you know what i mean oh yeah i mean that really depends on subjective experiences and psychologies of the players and the team themselves i mean i mean they know they are behind i mean that is that is an objective fact i mean how much that plays on their heads depends on the players and teams i think but, you know, that doesn't really change the whole modus operandi of the whole um, sort of affair here. They just need to do what they do best and just preserve the bonus and just destroy the other team's bonus when they play their side. It's that simple. Whether it's enough, we will see. But they don't really have any other options. That's the truth. Exactly. And now it looks as though we're going to be almost ready to send this live fairly soon. I think 44 biceps are looking to potentially use and the other thing is they have a green ping player to the server and tax though right now is sitting at 309 mm, which is, yeah that's that's gonna be painful it's coming down now though a little bit but that's that's gonna be rough however the fact they do have one like i said they have a green ping player to the server which is really fortunate for them uh because fax is going to be able to play pretty much shoddy at what is it 60 ping yeah 60 ping so where on earth is Fex connecting from then? Is he from somewhere in Central Asia? I am not 100% sure. Chat can let us know that actually, if you don't mind. Fex is, I've just scrolled upwards. It's steady connected from the Russian Federation. So he must play somewhere in Eastern Russia. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. And that that is definitely a help on this away game for them to state the obvious. But they actually are pinging pretty similarly aside from that to how NV were on the away server, right? Because they have head at 190 and then the maximum is Antax who's sitting at 261 with theirs at 233. So that's not terrible. And that green ping could really make a... Uh... And so Dana's telling me it, it's Siberia, I'm pretty sure, for uh, Fayex, which makes 100% sense now. Wow. Uh, my, off my hat to Siberian routing, then. I mean, I know it's like 100 something ping on EU, but when it comes to playing on Asian servers and Left 4 Dead 2 tournaments, I mean, 60 ping on a East Asian server, I mean, I'm not really sure you can argue with that, to be honest. If you're a person who's playing, who's residing in Siberia and enjoying that sort of differential. Indeed, and it looks as though that is going to be the lineup, and we are going live here now on Team Envy's home server. It is going to be Envy on the survivor side first, and indeed, they have actually set scores. So this is the full difference. These are the real scores that we're going to be using for this game, and it's going to be Envy on survivor side first, trying to see what they can get to happen. Their lineup is going to be Kimchi, Flyby, Kane, and Prove, and we will get to 44 biceps in just one second as this first hit is going to be going in for them with that smoker landing a pull with the pounce speed on top of Ellis and that's gonna be proved getting actually stumbled into spit for a quick second who do we have for 44 biceps dragon we have Antax, Fates, uh, Veras and Hev same lineup as from the previous chapter and for Envy we have Rose 
I already did that. Well, I can do the, oh, I can do that. <laughs> I mean, by all means. It's all good. I mean, it's kimchi flyby can't improve, and that's something where this lineup, I think, is the one they ran last week as well. So that cohesion of this lineup is going to be a little bit different than we saw with deck playing, but still, overall, they're going to be looking to do the best that they can on the survivor side, home server first, getting between 13 and 39 ping for this. But of course, their 44 biceps, Faix is playing with 61, so that is indeed a real number for them. As we're going to have a Boomer, Charger, Jockey, and Hunter in the spawn queue now for 44 biceps as the survivors are making their way towards this bridge choke. And Dragon looks like they're going to save it and try to get the maximum amount of damage they can with this Boomer. Although, if they don't know it already, they're going to find it's a very hard thing to accomplish a four cap with that much ping on their backs. Um, Envy are a little bit faster pace with handling this choke than they were in the previous server. Um, and again, I mean, Envy are doing what they did as well. They got one right at the back on the Humvee. Uh, the Bomber there gets popped right away. And a charger lad, does not add, sorry, gets misses completely. Charge, sorry, Hunter and Jockey both land as well. There is a double cap that goes in. A little bit of damage on the ball, but not a terrible, not a huge amount. That was a good boomer pop as well by Kimchi, obviously, from that Humvee. It looked like it was going to proxy for a second. It did not, and now Envy are hauling their way across this map, trying to get this tank to spawn up right in a short order and it will be up in the hands of fix for this so that's their green ping tank looking to do what he can with these cards as well it's gonna be a smoker spitter and a charger for the next hit for 40 more biceps as team envy work their way back towards the billboard rock is gonna explode as we see that smoker get cleared spitter goes in charger looking for something onto the survivor in the back but that is kane blocking those spawns on the billboard the survivors have gotten their hands on those distant Zuzis too, so let's see if they're able to do some damage from Coach and Rochelle. The Fix is really not wanting any of that, and he's gonna be standing in one of the corner rooms. He's trying to keep sight, and if this is the distance that he stays, he can keep sight all day on them potentially while taking that 1% damage chip, but he has to be that far back in order for that to work. Charger is gonna sack as well, Dragon, so they're gonna be now having the tank lose his frustration, and they're gonna be able to hit him with these Uzis as he gets closer. Indeed, and the hunter's just getting group skeeted there. Um, tank trying to throw rocks from huge distance away, but nothing's going to come of it. I think they really want to try, because they know they can play the patient game well, but it's just a case of opening up enough angles and space to land those rocks, and this is one of the tricky areas to play rock tank. I mean, you've really got to be on point with your SI and capitalize on any survivor errors to make a rock tank work here. Boomer gets popped. And it seems like 44 biceps are just sending in an SI one by one. Um, there is a car now on the roof. Are they? They're going back. They're running back. Yeah, indeed. Oh boy. Okay, so Fex is on second pass, 40 percent. They are out of here, and he's now running the opposite direction as well with this tank. NV moving all the way back through. Oh, I've seen this happen before, honestly, in a in a pretty crucial match on Dark Carnival, and it's because he was trying to set up his cars after he was trying to keep sight across the motel. He runs the tank forward in order to now give them time to get a hit for this, and this is one of those moves that I think you would only see in a match like this, where it's like, all right, let's AI the tank, but now it's gonna be a 6K HP AI tank with a quad, so this is nothing to laugh at from the special infected side of things. The tank is getting absolutely railed though, as he's throwing rocks, making his way in for the rest of this. Absolute AI tank cheese that we've already saw in the semifinals here. Smoker's gonna get a pull in the front on Rochelle. Tank is already down though to under 1k HP. Charger going in, trying to land on the cane. No dice going on. M2 on the jockey, shut down. What do you think of the AI call there? Um, well, I think the way that played out and when Envy made the pushback that they did, I don't think um, SI had any other choice. Like, they realized that. Um, so getting a quad cap was probably the best thing to do. But when the tank has just so many obstacles in that particular area, there's you just got to hope the quad cap actually lands. And I just think that was a really tall order. But very well handled from Envy. Even if there is an element of cheese to it, you know, this is a tournament match. If it's, if it's legal and if it's doable, there's nothing like illegal about it, then, you know, why not?
Exactly, and it's honestly because the only reason it happened on infected side is because the tank was trying to keep as much sight as possible before moving to go into any kind of hittable play. So he went into hittables when he was already like approaching second pass, and then the survivors were like, you know what, we don't want to deal with a hittable tank, we're going to go back. And that is exactly what they did. Hunter is going to land outside onto Kimchi with a smoker pull going in as well. Spit's going to go down to the survivors on top, but Coach is standing on the windowsill, so no damage hitting Kane. And... Honestly, with Envy's pace, it's probably only two hits left in this map if they're able to make their way down into the ravine, and that's going to put some serious pressure then on 44 Biceps to try to survive and not get wiped on that same tank on Survivor's side. Boomer Hunter, Charger, and Jockey for the next hit. Survivor's working their way all the way down the hill. Hunter looking for a damage pounce. Charger going in, not going to land. Hunter looking for it as well, but getting skeeted out of the sky. Jockey does land, and the Charger gets two fists, but still... Everybody sitting in that double digit damage between 13 and 26 for 44 biceps and now dragon There is just one hit left on this hill coming up Indeed just one more hit and actually MD are carrying higher bonus of so far than uh, 44 biceps did on their first chapter in the home server so As long as they defend this hit well, and they've been defending all the hits really well so far Hunter gets skeeted Smoker's tongue did not last. Spitz got maybe a scratch or two, but not much. Oh, and a Gessler then another tongue. Coach struggling a bit with comms as well at the same time. There is still a boomer up. And, well, with all the SI down, I mean, the, the car alarm triggering isn't really an issue for them. But there is the smoker still up, though. Yeah, that smoker's looking for something, not going to get it, however, that is Envy making it into the safe room and already scoring a beautiful amount of points on this first map, almost 1100, 1088, bringing their total score to 2337. It is now before 44 Biceps, first round of this away game for them, just about a 600 point game. That is how fast it can happen based on this first map. And you know, 44 Biceps have a chance of surviving this tank. It's pretty survivor-sided in a lot of ways, but the wipe from Envy is, of course, 100% possible with that Boomer. It will be Flyby's tank as well for Envy. First hit, though, is going to be a Smoker, Boomer, Hunter, and a Spitter to see some kind of damage off of this 2-2. 44 biceps making their way forward. Smoker pulls going to go out. Triple boom's going to wow. land, and there is the stack onto Rochelle without a spit, however. So that would have been a lot better for the SI had they been able to get that spit play. But this boomer is still causing havoc among the survivors, and we're seeing this high ping being an issue for them just a bit, Dragon, as those common are fierce. Reloading. Oh, yeah, like... You know, boom horde with 300 ping to boot, that is no joke. I mean, I've played enough Aussie pugs to know just how bad that can be. Indeed, and now it's going to be a Charger, Hunter, Jockey, and the Smoker. So there's the quad cap from the right sack order. And Dragon, from this bridge choke, we saw Team Envy go for it with high ping last time for this quad. But this time they have all green to land on 44 biceps. This is going to be quite precarious now. This is... Uh real make or break time actually like if, if MV can land this like they might have just suddenly shifted this whole contest around in their favor like done a complete 180 in an instant well, let's just see if they can actually make it work though they do have one smaller back again the survivors are copying exactly what MV did they got one at the back now actually two people on the M on the, the back coach and Alice just swapping positions there is a jockey trying to spawn from behind those so it justifies that position at the back this baiting um, timer, though, yeah. they they just turned it off as Coach was sitting in the back, and that is what they kind of need to do on Survivor's side. They're taking this as slow as they possibly can. They are getting a little bit separated from Coach, and now Coach is going to have to make his way up as the rest of this hit's going to be going in. Hunter looking for the latch, not landing it. There's the smoker and the charger landing with the jockey. Beautiful triple cap going out. It's not the quad, but that's why I was a little bit concerned there, Dragon, because they got progressively more separated and Envy capitalized all over that. Indeed. Now that's more like the S side I'm familiar with uh, in terms of Envy just, just doing what needs to be done. Even as you said, if it's not a quad cap, it's a tri cap, which is the next best thing. And you can just see the damage racking up on the board there. Indeed, we did. And this tank now for Envy on this server's first 
commit. It's gonna be flyby. Let's see what he is able to do with this green ping. We have a single boom going out as the survivors are choosing not to take their pills quite yet to stop the bleed. Hunter is going to land onto Fakes at the top of that billboard and this rock is going to get skeeted but flyby has a bit more room to get these cards and i would say than the last tank he is not attempting to keep sight the same way that we saw on the last half he's going for his hittables almost straight away because you need to spend some time setting these up correctly either on the roof or in the street or both we'll see if he goes for the third car as well by the tractor trailer but he is going to be making sure he has that sight kept and that he has the right spawns for this smoker jockey and charger for the support hit here and honestly an area like this it's all about the hittables and what his team can set up for him yeah he's uh he's trying to be a little bit stealthy to uh, try and not give away his exact position to the survivors but it seems like coach can use uh his audio location to find out exactly where he is and they know they are chipping this tank fly by trying to get this car up they're gonna run across the uh advertising billboard back onto the roof charger gets a spawn though and gets a charge onto ellis that is, wow. oh my goodness. And there's some huge separation with the jockey as well at the front. Smoker pulling Nick! This oh, is a car right, right there. Oh, oh, Flyby is about to get a double in cap onto 44 biceps with that car. That jockey and Smoker making great use of that space. He is going to go for the double kill here, it would seem. He does need two more yeah. hits, however. Rochelle is down below, and that's going to be a boom going out onto Ellis. Everything for 44 biceps falling apart in short order there he, these are going to be the kills on to both coach and nick that is the start that envy were looking for get a massive amount of bonus and now do work on si flyby's si support setting him up beautifully for that he is still alive on second pass with 37 hp there's the pounce landing on to ellis and the charger is almost going to land it onto rochelle but there is the smoke Dragon, that went wrong so fast for 44 biceps. Indeed. Um, well, I mean, you can just compare the two survivor performances. I mean, Envy decided to, to go back and play it safe, and uh, 44 biceps decided to stay on that ground and stay up front. And there it is, like, huge bonus for one team and a wipe for the other. And now it really is game on rails. Oh, yeah, this is an 800-point lead right 818 points for team 44 biceps they are going to have to try to get some kind of damage on the hittable tank here in kitty land but it's been hittables that have really helped out envy in this game as well plus their si just doing a great job of setting up and this is the thing about setting the scores though that you see be a bit different right we started off with envy on survivor side last half just by merit of them being there but now 44 biceps are going to have to recover from that wipe pretty quickly because they're going to be playing a survivor right now instead of having time on special infected to maybe try to stop envy's momentum so this could easily be now another wipe for them they are going to get probably more distance points on this but then they're going to need to control envy on their special infected half if you're 44 biceps you almost need to get these 500 points of distance in order to keep this in their corner I don't know because it's still anybody's game to take at this point but that was a monumental job by envy last map to get in that position so this is still pretty much going to put all the pressure on 44 biceps when they're playing with this higher ping and honestly dragon that's why personally i don't know if i like saying the scores just because it completely alters the momentum of the game that way it uh, yes it can do but as i said that for we know could be a very subjective thing and well hey after that first chapter it's certainly not affecting um team mv negatively i mean they've just effectively halved their deficit through one chapter alone Indeed they have, and I don't know, it, it really did come down to what was happening in terms of, you know, Envy's SI on map 3 and 4 last map, because it was a monumental gain happening by them, uh, you know, happening for 44 biceps prior to that, so we could see the exact same thing happen here. Remember, the scores were like 1900 to 300 after that first two map sequence we saw on the last half. That is a charge spit, managing to land with an insta-pull as well. That's a lot of damage going out onto Rochelle there, already knocking her down to 48 HP. They almost dealt 100 damage in that first hit alone. Almost 100. It was like 93, I think, in total. Yeah, something like that. And it's really, really showing on Envy's special infected side. With this green ping, they are absolutely a different team than we saw on that other server. But 
Again, it's not quite like dire straits for 44 biceps, but they have to be a lot more careful in terms of letting those chargers land, because if Envy can stack damage in any kind of way, that's what they're looking to do here as well. They drop the boomer and are looking for a third pinner for this room. Hunter, Jockey, Spitter, and they're hoping for a charger, and they're going to get it. I mean, yeah, if they can keep, if the SI can make something work here, I mean, it could be absolutely disastrous for 44 biceps. There's a charge and spit in a confined area. There's a hunter and a jockey as well for stumbles. Oh, hunter gets skeeted super quickly. And the charge is already pre spawned. They can survive as they can base out. Except, no! Shell got caught and in the spit too. Exactly, so that was almost a shutdown that now gets turned into a set of pills being committed by Rochelle, who has been charged now two hits in a row with that spit going down. And Envy can win this game just by continuing to land hits like that. If they keep hitting in terms of their sequence just to get the charger to land that would be incredible for them on that special infected side boomer is going to try to get an arc boom lands it onto one smoker pull going out jockey looking for an intercept is going to land on ellis instead and once again all of the si dogpiling on one person and we're seeing it work as antax is now down to 41 hp with Hez sitting at 47 antax now is going to be oh. slow and this tank is up already dragon into the hands of kimchi himself yeah mr miyagi in kitty land it's almost very fitting isn't it um, <laughs> this is de i think yeah for this particular tank i don't think they could have had a better tank player on mv for this map 2 tag uh so let's just see what kimchi does there was a charger that went somewhere and got destroyed um, he's already got three hitables in play. He's got the fork of the two dumpsters, and two of the survivors are already running slow, by the way. Um, Rochelle has just committed another set of pills. Antax is going to need some more pills. Um, and they're just trying to make sure they don't fall foul of the rocks either, knowing that they've got all that latency to deal with in terms of skeezing the rocks. Um, Kimchi's just biding his time. Um, they have two sides. Sorry, have one. Standard Uzi, two silos of one crime. So only fakes can really get solid chip from distance here. The hunter does land a double boom at the back. Um, this, the rock does get skeeted, the smoker gets destroyed. But this might give Kimchi some more time to maneuver, position his hitables the way he wants them to. Um, I don't know. This still feels like a. This still feels like uncertain ground for survivors as far as I'm concerned, Rails. They are pushing Kimchi as well. He's keeping sight from an amazing distance. We saw him do this in the quarterfinals as well. And it's like, if he can keep that kind of distance and keep bleeding them as he's not taking a massive amount of chip, they've started to shoot at him now, but this is still all in the SI's favor. Next hit is going in. That's going to be a triple cap landing with that Hunter, Jockey, and Charger. If they don't clear this Charger on Varus, that could easily be a hittable, but they actually do clear him before Kimchi goes for that. But it's really, really unfortunate for 44 biceps because this tank is still on first pass, working his way out now. He wants them to push him because he knows that three of them are going to be slow, but he's getting pretty messed up by these distance Uzis now as he's trying to climb this ladder down to 4k, but for the damage that they've gotten so far because of that triple cap, I think it is worth for what he's going for now, and the survivors are actually oh, all moving no. towards the kitchen to try oh. and get ammo. This could be perilous here as there is a dumpster sitting right there. Ellis is going to have to commit oh. pills. Double boom is going to land. Hittable is now looking to land onto someone, and it's not quite going to do so as that jockey gets cleared. The story of this, though, Dragon, is look at how much damage has been caused just by the SI support and with Kimchi just positioning himself so well to keep allowing yeah. his SI to get damage. But now he's in a precarious position. He has to bail super fast. And he oh, yeah. does get out, but not without taking nearly 1500 chip um you know what surprised me is that kimchi actually had an opportunity to get a straight in cap on coach earlier on like two hits ago and he didn't take it he went for a, a trickier angle on someone else who was up and running a nice rock onto nick though a co uh, charger was missed on coach um kimchi's just trying to milk this tank for all it's worth um with 300 hp still going they do skip that rock um, but yeah, I mean, look how much they've worked through that health bonus rails. I mean, no spare pills. Two, one's running slow already, and another's about to run slow. Uh, it's just, they've just been worn down. That rock was so close to landing. He's going to throw another underhand one right now. Is that going to land? He had two or three close rocks as he was downstairs as well, but this 
Is not the white going out onto 44 biceps? Interestingly enough, it was a rough tank fight in which we saw so many SI land, but technically they're doing better than Envy had on the opposite server, so they're still going to be eking their way forward for these all-important distance points. It was tough for them because that tank never committed, and there was so much damage being done by the SI support, but this is silver lining now, where they don't have anyone in capped yet, and they might be getting the spare set of pills up here, and their ability to hold W through this event. So, not quite catastrophe yet, as we see this going in. Oh. Charger is going to land. That There goes the no in-cap situation, but a triple boom does land in the back as Rochelle takes the first in-cap on the side of 44 biceps so far. Yeah, I don't really see them making the save from the way their health is, the latency, plus the fact that there's an event to negotiate. But um, they're still making the distance points. And, you know, they're, they're pushing that uh, deficit back up to over a thousand just by doing this. So they're still making life difficult for NV. Um, but the hunt, sorry, the attack goes in, double charge at the back, incapping Coach and a smoker pulling Nick. And Coach was still being pounded. Indeed he was, and there is still common now coming for him, but 44 biceps still not dead, as that's two survivors now having taken the incaps. On 44 bicep side, there is no hit up yet, and it looks as though Fakes is still fast with that green ping and green health, so they're making even more distance off of this now, making their way forward. It's gonna be a spitter getting picked as well before any in cap went out. All the horde now is on Nick, he is a human pipe bomb thanks to that. And the Jockey and the Hunter are the only two pinners that we see. Rochelle is going to go down. Hunter lands in front. This is some decent separation capitalization coming out from NV. But they are going to get the revive onto Rochelle. Only 30 common left. And I think NV were trying to just focus on those in caps instead. And this is 44 biceps with a nice showing on this map now. With that smoke going out in the back. Jockey looking for a latch as well. Rochelle is the last survivor up, but they've gotten all the distance points except for 13 in this chapter. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Rochelle just continue going. But the spit's gonna land. Not going to hit her, but is gonna pick on theirs as he gets up though. Survivors moving forward once again. The horde is almost dead, and two of them are still eking out those all-important distance points. And there it is, with Rochelle almost closing the door on a hunter, trying to get the latch, going oh, for a he... melee skeet. <laughs> Honestly, Dragon, that was a decent showing, especially after that tank from 44 biceps. I mean, I was kind of half right and half wrong when I said they wouldn't make the save from I guess Rochelle did. She still died, though, but... I mean, yeah, they got the distance. I mean, seven points shy of the full quota, but that's still look good enough, I think, on uh, their away server. So what does that bring it now? That's like 1,311 point deficit. So if NV get another strong survivor showing, um, well, I, I can't imagine what's going to happen in the next two chapters after that. But NV just need to keep up this wave of momentum. And they shut down that charger and the jockey. Chuck is just having a miserable time. Smoker's having to hide. Does pull Rochelle for a tick or two. Really, it's going to come down to how 44 biceps play this tank on SI this map. Because the thing is, that tank can so easily get shut down so long as the survivors kind of play it aggressive and don't eat any hittables. That is the main thing. We saw a really nice rock tank by Kimchi on the last half that got a maximum amount of damage I think he could have for that area without fully committing. But in order for that to happen on 44 bicep side, they would probably need to have low latency versus NV right here because it's so hard to land those pinners when the survivors are able to stay mobile and stay sharp with that green ping. Jockey, Hunter, Boomer, and Charger for this next hit. Looking to spawn up and go in right now. There is a nice jockey landing, however, with a double boom at the same time. Charger's going to turn around, getting a couple of fists onto Coach. That was a nice attack for that area, and that Boomer gets a proxy for a tri-boom. It was a very wayward charger, but he redeemed himself by getting quite a few fists in with uh, support from the jockey. So nice damage onto Kane there. Um, at 44 biceps still showing that even on their outside play, they're not exactly slouching either. They're still, you know, hooking things up despite the, despite the latency. And the next hit will be a spitter, smoker, jockey, and a hunter. So here comes a double cap. And um, the, jo the jockey just takes the same victim as a smoker for a bit more damage onto Rochelle, um, but not a huge amount from that attack. 
Yeah. It was a little late on that as well, I believe, where I think he could have gotten a couple more ticks had he spit on the Hunter first, but still pretty decent damage. Their pinners are landing, which is really, really good for them. But now, let's see exactly what Envy decide to do on this tank on survivor side, as 44 Antax is going to get this tank for his team. Antax, if there's anybody on their squad that can make the most out of this, I believe it's him, just because of this situation. He has his two dumpsters in right now. Forklift, though, goes flying out the back, so he's going to have to work with just those two. Hunter is going for some kind of sky pounce as well, and this dumpster is going to work its way all the way in, and then ricochet off the light post, which is just super unfortunate for them, had they actually been able to land that. Charter is not going to land. Hunter gets skeeted by Kimchi at the last second and this boomer is looking to wreak havoc on this special infected side as the tank is going to be knocking his hittables around they do actually get a one boom from that but i wouldn't be surprised to see envy push in this situation that's exactly what they're doing kimchi trying to get as much chip as he possibly can while the tank is trying to work these hittables in he hasn't gotten one close to them yet and that's going to bounce off the light pole yet again now that dumpster is going to go in past them and he's going to be forced to commit with whatever he has now jockey charger and smoker for the rest of this si hit there is the jockey landing after after the smoke tank getting a punch as well trying to get the corner onto coach but he's missing oh no. he's missing Contact. punches gets the last punch onto kane but it's not even a down there dragon that was like the dream result really for team mv i don't think they could have asked for anything more like i mean a zero hit a tank at this stage of the of the tournament would have been too much to ask for but just a few punches no in caps um yeah this is but the, the, the goal is open now for NV. They just need to not screw it up. I think they've got this. Exactly. This is going to be a 2-2 for the alleyway, it would seem. Smoker and Hunter setting up for this. And they know that Coach is at 1 HP. There's the Boomer Magic to land. Hunter is looking for a pin onto Ellis. Going to find it as well. With Spit going out on top of that generator and a Smoker pull for good measure. Still not cleared, actually. Oh, That's a lot of damage on the proof. Yeah, uh, 44 biceps still shaking it up a bit. Like, they're just doing the same thing as MV, just piling everything onto one survivor at a time. Spitz is trying to delay. That does not stop. Uh, Prove, though. A jockey's coming in, though. Oh, he just he killed both the jockey and the shots of the back. Oh, my goodness. He got a jockey kill and a level against the corner there <laughs> so he he does take 10 damage but that's obviously a lot better than the jockey magic to set him up for some kind of charge off the roof a little bit i mean i like the attitude i think in terms of the aggression from envy especially on that low ping because he pushed up and killed that spitter and then was able to survive that exact hit which is something that you probably need green ping to be able to do i would say this is going to be another hit coming in with the Spitter, Smoker, Charger, and Hunter. So pretty powerful once more for Team 44 Biceps here on SI side. They got to keep doing this kind of damage or we're going to be seeing a fairly tied game moving into map 3. We'll see if that is the case or not as Team Envy work their way forward. They have two survivors bleeding but still a massive amount of bonus on Kimchi and Flyby. Reloading. Reload. I mean, what more could you ask for if you're Envy at this point? The... I mean, I haven't even checked the bonus yet as to how much they stand to make for surviving this hit and the next one after that. Yeah, 660 right now. Like, <laughs> here comes oh. it, though. Charger does land very briefly. Spit, where was the spit, though? Spit was late again. That's the second time on this map we've seen a pinner land and the spitter, for whatever reason, not able to capitalize on that, so... Envy is going to keep moving their way through. That did take about 50 points off the bonus, but it's only chip damage for them as everyone is still fast. Even Kane right now is just bleeding out to about 48 HP as they work their way forward. It's going to be a Jockey, Charger, Boomer, and a Hunter for the next hit. Potentially the last hit, actually, for 44 Biceps, if they can make this work. And Envy know that this picnic table area is probably better for cutting those spawns, especially because there is no smoker in the spawn queue. Hunter's going to be bouncing around, trying to find a land there. Not going to get it, though. Nicely skeeted by Prove, along with Kimchi. Jockey does land for just a split second onto Ellis, and there is a little bit of common damage going out, but Envy are going to be pushing their way forward. I don't think they're going to have their survivors pop, though, so Kane and Prove might be kind of vulnerable to one last hit that Envy might be able to get. There are still commons trickling in from the back, but it's going to be a Spitter, Smoker, 
Boomer, and the last spawn is going to be a Hunter, so a little bit of damage potential in the back here. Boomer does rocket and get popped. Smoker looking for a latch onto Nick, but the tongue does get cleared. Hunter gets skeeted. That is going to be just a free spit going down, but nothing doing for 44 biceps here. We are going to be seeing an extremely close match with these cumulative score totals moving into map three. It's going to be 3,648 to 3,421. Still in favor of 44 biceps, but Dragon, they need to make this map. 227 point differential with two chapters remaining. Um, <laughs> they, uh, they, as in 44 biceps, now have to pull out all the stops. They, I mean, they're now under immense pressure, which you wouldn't have thought after the first two chapters on their home server. I mean, they were riding the wave higher than anyone ever could. Um, but now it's come to this. Like I said, even off those first two chapters, like, no way was the game over at that point. And now we're seeing the result of what's happened four chapters after that. So they've, they've got to basically make the most of their tags, 44 biceps. That's, that's their only option. If they don't do that, this is uh this is NV's march to the grand final. Yeah, and they also cannot afford a wipe here with that tank that's outside. They have a lot of hits to deal with, of course, in the tunnel of love first, but they are gonna have to be extremely careful with this tank. And they can do it, right? That's the thing. Like they they can still find a way to kill that and make distance points, but then the question's gonna be you know, can they shut down Envy on this map after Envy made it on the last server? They got those distance points that they really needed after 44 Biceps made it. So 44 Biceps, in order to replicate that, they're going to have to make this chapter and then do work. I mean, if the survivors decide to take the tank inside, that's obviously still possible because then you can get a bunch of spawns with red ping plus the tank with longer arms and try to get that kind of wipe that way. But I expect to see Envy continue to be extremely uh, aggressive on their survivor side and... 44 biceps can try to replicate that, but this is the situation that you get when you have the score set beforehand, right? So it's like every single time now for the last two maps that they've had to go first, right? Like 44 biceps have been playing with a disadvantage, but also with the lead. So we're not seeing Envy play first and then 44 biceps on SI, and that I think can do something just to the rhythm of the game in some ways. I mean, teams can adjust to it, but this is Envy's chance now to really keep their momentum rolling on SI side first, which I think they definitely have down pat just to how much they've played and how much they've played together. So, Charger, Smoker, Boomer, and Jockey for this first hit. Dragon looks as though 44 biceps are baiting it as much as possible. Yeah, but of course, because the scores were set before the match started, it's actually 44 biceps are playing survivors first, which I'm not fully used to, but here it goes. It comes in, Charger at the back, Smoker coming as well, Jockey got shot down, Boomer gets popped. Um, actually great first handling, uh, great handling of the first SI tag by 44 Biceps there. There's a better start than the previous two chapters for sure. Indeed it was, and they know that this is pretty much crunch time for them. They gotta keep doing what got them here, two being the number two seed in the tournament, right? And the next hit that's going to be pretty precarious for them could be coming in right now, as that's going to be a jockey oh. landing charger going oh. in on Rochelle with a pre-spit as well. He is taking some serious damage from that, just not being able to move out of it in time. And once again, Dragon, Envy's been doing this for the entire match, but there you saw the stack from the SI again. Indeed. I mean, stack is, is so useful. I know a few people have, over the years have called it a real cheese strap, but when SI is so difficult to play, Boomer going out the back of a triple boom. I'm just coming from the front. Jockey's landing onto one of the back, but does uh, gets a few ticks of damage there, but does get cleared eventually. Um, not a bad hit actually from the SI, um, but the survivors are still going strong and they, and they need to go strong because this is not an easy place to take attack. Exactly, and that skeet was actually crucial by Rochelle there because they had one green survivor forward and three boomed in the back. That could have been really, really precarious. We do have this Charger rocketing in, landing onto Coach, as Nick is also going to get pulled back. Spit, however, is late once again, so that's going to be 44 Biceps not getting punished on that as much as they could have been. But that Boomer gets a beautiful triple boom. Dragon, they are very close to spawning this tank. Indeed, yes. Um, I was at 53%, and... It's in that particular corner spot there, where if the survivors are really persistent, they can try and get some other chip on a tank before the tank can really do anything. 
but they have a hit up at the same time. I don't think they're really going for the chip. There's a double cap landing. Oh, the tank spawns in a different area than before, actually. It spawns up top on the tracks. Indeed it does, and that is just an example of Left 4 Dead 2 being Left 4 Dead 2. You can set the percentage of the same one, but it will spawn in a different spot because it's a different server. That is competitive Left 4 Dead 2, and this is the tank up in the hands of Kane as we see a charger landing with a rock now going in, does get skeeted by Antax as the tank is going to be rotating now. Boomer goes in and gets a nice double boom. If the tank is going to rotate, now will be the time. Oh. Rock is going oh. to almost land onto Coach. And if you notice, Dragon, we mentioned this before, but he is at that 1% damage range, especially with Susie's. He is taking no chip, and he has free sight all the way across this park. The survivors just about managing to escape the rocks that uh, are coming from miles away. The ones that, oh God, that one almost shaved Coach's head right off. And now Hunter's trying to land on Ellis, but had struggled to get through the windows and got shut down for his troubles. Um, there is a charger up, there's another spawn. Oh! That rock, though! That rock lands onto Nick from a hitbox. This is the situation that 44 biceps do not want to be in. We saw a rock tank going out onto NV in the last chapter that got a fair amount of damage, and we saw that Rock Tank map too in this half of the game from Kimchi Kane trying to replicate this and just take full advantage of the fact that the survivors are on ping. He is getting somewhat LOS now, but the survivors do not want to be in this spot for when he commits. They know they have to get out and maybe back their way into the tunnel. Smoker Charger Jockey for the hit, and I think Kane is looking to commit on this hit with a try cap with a rock going in. He was, I thought he was on his way in, but he didn't need to be, because once again, the SI doing a brilliant amount of damage, as that rock is going to get skeeted, 44 biceps cannot let this continue. Oh, they're going into the tunnel. To pull back in, I had a feeling that they were thinking about that. Yeah. Because, not just for ammo as well, or whatever, but just to try and force his tank into not playing his patient game. Um... But Coach is not going forward, he's not allowing the tank to go SI. So they chip the tank, Smoker pulls. Right, not quite close enough, a Hunter does land though, a triple boom at the back! Oh, that's a double punch going out with a separation pull now onto Coach. Missing a couple punches though is Kane. They are going to get that Smoker pull cleared and they have to just Uzi this tank to death at this point. But he has the corner and is curve rocking onto uh -huh. Antax before decommitting he might be dropping back down the other entrance here let's see if he does or not but he is down to 1500 hp this is not the situation the survivors want to be in charger is going to land curve rock going in not landing breaking on the swan's face right there as they're going to be just facing this tunnel tank rock landing onto antax and this is what team 44 biceps don't need the tank is going to die the hunter is in the back Oh man, that's even worse than the rock tank that we saw last chapter dragon. That just drained 44 biceps down to the minimum. Yeah, I mean... I mean, they're quite a persistent bunch though. I think they'll make the start of the coaster. Um, but... I don't see them going very far for it. At this rate. Yeah, that coaster with this amount of horde is going to be detrimental for them. They already have two survivors with one in cap. These relentless hits going in for another triple cap as the spitter is just sort of waiting on this hit. That is going to knock both of those survivors black and white for this next choke. Coach jumps out of the spit, however. That's going to be good for Team 44 Biceps. They can probably get this revive, but this Hunter is looking to troll maybe as well. Going in, managing to get a scratch before it dies, and now 44 Biceps need to eke out as many distance points as they possibly can on this map. They are going to start gaining points up right now, but this is going to be a lead that is extremely threatened by Team Envy on their survivor side. Boomer lands a single boom onto Rochelle. Last set of pills has been taken by Antax. And with that spitter in the queue, it's going to be a charger and a jockey to support this hit. They're going to try their best to make it up there, but that's going to be the spit going down onto Rochelle for a bit more damage. And she's also boomed. Jockey goes in, manages to land, and then gets another in cap onto Coach. That's going to put both those survivors down for the first time. Charger's going to go in, managing to land onto Nick. That is a death, and this is going to be the wipe going on to 44 biceps from team envy in short order spit going down and that's going to be the smoker pull 
on to Antax. They make it just to the base of the Coaster Dragon, and now Envy are ready to blow this game open if they can do anything on Survivor's side here. So 3,972 to 3,004. So it's a four, five, sorry, 551-point differential there. Yep. And that's not even the full distance of this Coaster map. So... <laughs> This is a real crunch tag now. This is the most important tag for 44 biceps to play. Like, they've got to make this work if they've, they've got to keep a foothold in this game. Yeah, it's going to come down to their SI side, and it's going to come down to what happens on that tank. I think Envy are going to try to play it as aggressively as possible as they're outside, because if they can get, like, a good, like, 1 to 1.5k chip on that tank and then take them back in the tunnels, that can really be the difference between the tank managing to get you know, multiple in-caps or just pushing the survivors into a bad spot versus having 6k there. So, Envy know that this is now kind of their chance to take control. And if they can do this on survivor side here and then make bonus, that would put them in a beautiful position. And obviously, they're trying to score about 1k points per map as well. It's still doable for 44 biceps to stop them, but this tank is going to have to be absolutely huge as we continue going right. forward. So... Let's see what Team Envy can do on their survivor side. Looks as all four of them are readied up, but we're just waiting on fakes to ready up for 44 biceps. It's going to be a decent hit at the start as well, but with this kind of ping, of course, it's going to be difficult to land any kind of multi-cap in this area if Envy are able to pay attention and also kill any potential boomers. I mean, what 44 biceps do have to their advantage is the fact that if... It's a bad area for survivors to take the tank, for starters, and they've also got their tank arms um, no to help arms. matters. They've just got to hook up their SI more with it, and if, if they can do that, I think they can, if not wipe the survivors, at least sort of damage them enough to the point where they can mitigate the loss and distance might be similar to what 44 Biceps got on their chapter. But, um, yeah, I mean, this is, this is really... <laughs> This is almost nail-biting stuff, this is. Indeed it is, and it's going to be a Jockey, Charger, Smoker, Boomer for this first hit for 44 Biceps. Jockey spawning in the back. Charger trying to land onto Coach, but nothing going. Boomer does get a single boom as that Smoker gets just a bit of a pull there, but again, instantaneously cleared. Hoping for a Charger and a Spit probably on the next hit for 44 Biceps, and... The survivors can pretty much clear almost all the way to the swan room before that hit is going to be up. So we're looking at Envy fully engaging their W Gogo -Go here on their home server. Spitter, Hunter, Charger, and a Jockey for the next hit. So some pretty nice damage potential, especially in these enclosed areas. Yes, they just need to make sure that they get it in these enclosed areas instead of allowing Envy to push ahead. But knowing Envy, they're a very cautious team. They like to play their own tempo. Um, they're in no rush to do anything. This jockey's creating mayhem at the front. The hunter and charger coming at the back. Oh, the charger's trying to wait. The charger, I think, wasted a little bit too late for the uh, charge there, but the jockey did manage to keep nicking the spit for a bit longer. Definitely helps their case, but they need to have a really, really good hit, I'd say, at the drop here. I think they're due a smoker for it as well. And because the charger didn't manage to land in that spit, you know, they got what they could from the hunter and the jockey, but this kind of stack is going to be extremely important for them. No spit on this though, so it's going to be the boomer hit, and that can do some real havoc in terms of separation, as long as Envy aren't able to get those insta-clears. They're going to be running with a good amount of shotguns though, three shotties, one Uzi for this, so close shutdowns looking to be made, and also of course those quick clears. Let's see what Team 44 Biceps can do with it, looks as though they are setting up up top here actually with that hunter and charger now the charger's going downstairs the smoker is still up top maybe looking for some kind of pull but they're actually adjusting their spawns here a little bit more not sure exactly when they're going to send it out but they should also be dropping maybe one survivor first as this bang timer is starting to get lower and lower i think they're waiting for i think 44 biceps are probably expecting one of them to drop and just remain as a lane, lane sentry down there to draw spawns, which they're doing. But now they're going up top, and they're committing their spawns, but getting completely annihilated. Beautifully handled by Team MV right there. Flyby getting that skeet, and now... I mean, I, I like the idea up there, because they had one survivor drop, and they go for a triple cap up top, hoping that one of the uh, survivors drops to get to, like, charge down the hole or something like that, but... 
not a massive amount of damage there without that spitter. So Jockey Boomer Spitter Charger now has a decent amount of damage potential, but they're also going to be facing survivors who are outside and looking to spawn this tank. Wouldn't be surprised to actually see them hit closer to the tank spawn. This jockey is going to be spawning up, trying to land anything they can. That charger gets instantaneously cleared. Spitter goes down on absolutely nothing, and now the boomer is going to be looking to get something as the survivors get closer to spawning this tank, which is going to come up right now into the hands of He himself for 44 biceps. This, I mean, this is riding on He's shoulders now. Like, it's, <laughs> I would not want to be in his position right now. Um, he's got to try, I mean, I'm pretty sure he will try and play Rock Tank as much as he can. But at the same time, I don't think he can afford to be a little lax on his positioning because if the survivors decide to pull back, which Envy have shown they will do and are prepared to do from map one, then it could be really, it could be game over for them. So he just needs to be constantly on the ball, make sure he's aware of his positioning and survivors at all times and act accordingly. And we're um, seeing Pistol and Susie ship coming out here, so no distant Susie quite yet, but the tank is already taking a little bit of ship. He might have to be just relying on this next hit to even transition closer to them. It's going to be a Charger Smoker and a Jockey for it, but you see this Pistol ship going out by Kimchi at the same time. The Smoker's getting shot down to almost nothing. Charger does land, but it gets instantaneously cleared. Jockey lands for a little bit of damage in the back, but Dragon, as you mentioned, like, he's going to have to commit on them, and they probably need a boom to land in order to do any kind of work here. Indeed. Well, the survivors have the option right now to pull back. I mean, he's already second pass, and the spawns aren't up. Um, NV, though, are holding their ground, so they must feel confident enough to keep it in the open area. But now the tank is having to commit. Um, they're pulling back. Oh, I don't know about this. The boomer does get popped. This is going to be rough if this charger lands, but they're looking to get those shutdowns in the back, and they're just going to run this tank all the way down the tunnel until that hunter manages to land. Tank whiffing a punch there onto Ellis, now finding it onto him, but this tank does not have anything else. One more punch onto Coach is going to do it. That was risky, I would say, but when the boomer rocketed off the roof, you know, if that boomer had managed to come from behind to get a stumble, that could have been huge. That's, but yeah. That's yeah. what I was hoping for. Like, if the boomer was going to do that, I think the boomer should have come from behind and not in front. I really believe uh, that could have changed the complexion of everything. But now it's just a look at that health bonus for, for a map three tank. That is 1,063 points in the hands of Envy still. They're going to throw their liquid spawns there, though. So Spitter and then Boomer dying. They're looking for a quad on this, but I think Envy are wise to that, and they know there are only two spawns. No charger in the queue either for 44 biceps. I think they might just W this all oh, the yeah. way up to the top, and indeed that's exactly what we're going to see. Absolutely no hesitation from Envy whatsoever. Taking the choke uncontested is going to put them in a beautiful position as long as they don't get some random quad here. It's a charger, hunter, smoker, and a jockey for this hit, and... This is something where NV can choose to take as much time as possible. They are extremely safe in their position right now. Yeah, they have four spare sets of pills. Only one's bleeding and he's still running fast, even if he bled out completely. Jockey got destroyed. Charger just gets annihilated. Hunter lands briefly. Smoke is just pulling someone and gets... Just, yeah, I think the wind is now out of 44 bicep sails. It's completely reversed. Um... <laughs> I, all I can say is well done, NV. I mean, I can't see how... I mean, unless it's a really catastrophic fuck-up in the next round by NV, then I, th this is their game to lose now. Exactly, and they are still carrying that 1,036 bonus. We do have a pause from NV. Uh, I don't know if that's a tactical pause or not, but they're going to be dealing with a Charger, Jockey, Boomer, and one other spawn for Team 44 Biceps is going to be that spitter. Boomer gets a single boom on to Coach. We are about to see NV take the lead cumulatively as they work their way forward. They're deciding to wait on these spawns as well, maybe to rocket off the top of this roof. Spit's going to go down in front. Charger looking for a land, not going to get it because he landed on one survivor's head. Jockey is the last thing alive in Antax sort of just left out to dry here by the rest of the team. I don't want to say anything too preemptively, but it, I mean, this is the way they're handling this chapter of all chapters is just sublime right now by NV. I mean, this, 
This is more reminiscent of how they used to play in the past when they were at the absolute prime. Yeah, the home server has definitely been working to their advantage so far on both sides, and if this team, aka NB, does advance to the Grand Finals, we'll be seeing another home and away match against Rehab, but 44 Biceps have one last choke here on this map to try to get anything. Boomer, Jockey, Smoker, and Spitter. Really no damage being taken by NB after that tank, and... This is only 75 common left on this horde. The spitter's gonna go in and it's going to die. So that might trigger the survivors to go a bit further forward because that damage potential isn't gonna be there. Plus they know there's one spawn down. They don't have to risk it though. They can kind of just hang out here and keep tanking the common as they now start working their way forward. Looks as though Prove is looking to get any kind of shot that he can on the top of that billboard to block that spawn. It is a charger for 44's last spawn. Let's see if they can make anything happen here. Smoker spawns up, gets a pull onto Rochelle, who then does get charged down, and there's a jockey going out onto Kane, but Dragon, it is still just kind of chip damage going out with that bonus now still sitting at 955. Indeed, and uh, Envy have plenty of time for the last two at the back to get back around that loop and onto the home stretch. So, I mean, if anyone wants, like, a masterclass example of how to play Survivor Sai in a high-stakes tournament match on this chapter, like, this is it, you're watching it. Like, refer back to this in the future for, like, just how to play this chapter. Exactly, and now this charge is going to spawn up, trying to go for Rochelle. Nothing going, though. Hunter looking for it now, as the pre-spit did go out, but Kane gets the skeet before being pulled. Once again, because he was on the railing, he does get briefly reset, but there are no spawns left as the rest of this common is going to be up, down, and dealt with by Team Envy with just one or two spawns maybe even to do any kind of damage here. The Jockey is up looking maybe for another reset, but Envy are wise to it with the rest of this hit going to constitute the last 444 biceps, Charger, Hunter, Jockey, and Boomer. And there's one survivor bouncing in the back trying to block those top spawns. Boomer does get a single boom onto Kimchi, but the Jockey drops and it's just the Charger looking for something from the front. Landing though, a double charge on Rochelle and Nick as that Jockey lands too. 44 biceps not giving up, trying to get the most amount of damage that they can. But unless their tank wipes next chapter, it's going to be NB's oh game because goodness. they're going to score 4,829 points cumulatively. That is a massive bonus, a 1,400-point chapter with 61.2% of the bonus there, Dragon. That was a clinic, like you said. This is literally the first time in the entire contest for this particular semi-final match that Envy have a lead. And when they got it, they've now made it a, what, an 857-point lead now? in just the space of, like, you know, one chapter, just that one chapter. It's the key, I've always said this about Dark Carnival, but chapter three with the coaster, like, that's the key one, because there are so many variables and factors that can change the end result. And if you nail them all right, it makes the tremendous amount of difference in any other chapter in the game. And we've just seen it right there. Yeah, they were able to shut down that tank inside as well with so many quick clears going out. The Boomer dying at the start of it really did not help 44 Biceps' case, but they have a hittable tank to play with here, and then they'd have to do something miraculous, like you said, on Survivor side to make it still doable, of course. We'd never like to say it's over until it's over, but if this score holds, you're going to be seeing Rehab versus Envy in the Grand Finals next weekend. We will see exactly how that goes if it heads that way. If it had been 44 Biceps, obviously, it would have been a best of one, but it'll be a home and away from what I've been told for Envy versus Rehab on Hard Rain. Let's see though if 44 Biceps can pull off the equivalent of a Left 4 Dead 2 Miracle with this Smoker, Boomer, Charger, Hunter first. Last half now for Envy on Survivor side. They've already gotten as many points I think as they could have hoped for on this home server and that Boomer shutdown continues the trend as the survivors are going to work their way out of the safe room. Smoker, Charger, and Hunter maybe deciding to hit now. Indeed they are. There's a pounce landing on to Nick for a split second. The Charger gets turned into mincemeat, and that Smoker is not able to land. So that's all they wrote for this hit. And Dragon, I mean, if you're the tank here, I guess you're going for a hittable wipe. Yeah, just make sure you get those hittables in play. I mean, even if they're not in a great spot, if you could just get all three of them into that area and have the bumper cars on the other side, at least it keeps the survivors under somewhat certain, you know, positional pressure. 
Indeed it does, and this tank is up in the hands of Vares now. 444 biceps, hitting these two dumpsters around. He's going to have three in total to play with. That dumpster is going to go flying in, landing on the left-hand side next to the tents. This next dumpster is going to go flying in as well. Almost in a similar spot there, but right behind the hedges. In a maybe kind of difficult spot for him to get to without any SI help. It's a Hunter Charger and a Boomer for this hit. Looks as though they're going to be sending in the Hunter. Landing in the tree and then getting skeeted by Kimchi there with the charger and boomer still to come and that dumpster is going to land almost right next to the other one but on the other side of the hedges so those two are not really in pristine positions for theirs and he's already second pass here well yeah he's uh he's running out of options and he's just he's paused the game indeed he has i'm not sure if his si or i did notice okay. a certain lag spike there on my end so he probably felt the same thing i did could have been, but now he is going to be working this dumpster in from the left-hand side on his commit. Not going from the bumper cars either. Let's see if he's able to make this work. Launching it towards the two survivors that are standing on the opposite side of the tree. Nothing really going on it, however, as he now is going to try to punch Nick and indeed does. We have a single boom out, but the tank is already down to under 2k HP. Working his way towards Nick in the corner too. Getting two punches onto Kimchi, but that is all they wrote. That Charger also didn't go in until very late, and this is now Team Envy doing what they did similarly in RBT1, because it looks as though if this score holds here, they are going to be working their way to the grand finals of RBT5 to play against Team Rehab Dragon. That tank just wasn't able to get what they needed. Indeed, the support was too late. I think uh, Veras wasn't sure what he wanted to do. Didn't see the hitables lining up. Spitz coming in, doesn't gonna do anything. Boom gets popped straight away. It's just a hunter and a jockey up. Um, are they gonna waste it or are they gonna save for the next hit? It looks as though they are planning on just sacking the spawns. At least the jockey is positioned to do so. They're gonna save the spawns. But you know what else I've noticed, Rails? If they keep up with this bonus, we could actually see them managing a 6k score over four chapters. Indeed, we could, and that's Smoker, Hunter, Charger, and Jockey. This is the quad cap that 44 biceps need to try to land here. Smoker is spawning in the front, but I honestly don't think going inside here, yeah, it, it's not going to be the best for them, so they're actually going to wait and hold until the survivors are getting outside here. That's really putting a lot of weight just on this one hit, and that's kind of what they need to do, but the odds of them landing it in this spot are pretty low, so long as the survivors are able to shut down one quarter of that or more. They're seeing a Three shotgun loadout as well by NV here, trying to get those shutdowns, plus one Uzi. And that's going to be Hunter swung up on the top, Charger working his way, and Hunter gets blown out of the sky, Charger gets shut down. Smoker gets a couple scratches, but yeah, that was not the ideal spot, I think, to hit that, just because the survivors were able to back up and uh, funnel everything into those shotguns in pretty short order. The survivors have reached the event, and two of 44 Biceps players are, all, are still riding the old goose eggs on the scoreboard for SI damage. Um, it's a smart play actually by NV in the sense that they're taking three shotguns because there is an event and commons will, sorry, the shotguns will sort through the commons quicker. There is a single boom onto Nick, but he's safe on the scaffolding. I mean, the commons aren't going to do much to him. Um, he's really the dirty dancer in this guy. This has always been a strat where something I've advocated in the past where if someone can deliberately get themselves boomed as a single boom during an event like this, they got all the attention of the commons, and it leaves the other three survivors free to handle the SI support, the gappers. So although that probably wasn't intentionally done like that, it worked out in their favor. But at the same time, I don't think some of the spawns committed either. It's like they're gearing up for a quad cap, and they are. Yeah, they are. There's the jockey landing. Hunter going for the intercept. Not going to land, though. That was the skeet by Kimchi with this charger just getting a couple punches down below. That looked bad for a split second there, but that 15-shot skeet onto theirs is what shut that hunter down. Envy making their way forward now, pushing through the rest of these common. They have a utterly incredible health bonus for this chap as well. Still at 833, making their way forward. They're going to stop here. Clear some more of the common while blocking all those spawns around. Smoker, Hunter, Boomer, and Spitter might be the last hit for 44 biceps in RBT5 right here. Let's see if this Boomer manages to land. Nope, it's going to get popped. Spit does go down onto Prove for just a bit of damage, but I expect Envy now, knowing that it's a 
three cap with a spit that is already gone they are going to be working their way in this hunter is all the way in the back making its way through the barns and tax looking for a quick despawn spitter is going to go in but not land on much of anything hunter gets shot in the face for its trouble smoker is gonna get cleared and this is team envy rolling their way after killing this jockey into the safe room and to the grand finals 6,129 points between both games. So this game, they scored about 4,800 points just because of that score update. And that is Team Envy taking utter control of this. And they have punched their ticket dragon to the RBT5 Grand Finals. Yeah, of course. It's now, like, mathematically impossible for 44 biceps to do anything, assuming they even could pull out a 100% bonus on the away server. Um, commiserations to them, congratulations to Envy though, I mean, their experience showed and they just pulled it around in like the most dominant fashion I've seen in a long, long time. Indeed, and it's going to be a Charger Smoker Boomer Hunter for this hit from Envy. Team 44 Biceps, of course, playing it out, the tournament's number two seed, going down here to the number three seed, but we expected it to be a close game right down through the end. Looking back at it though, Dragon, I think the point that momentum really changed, aside from Envy making the save from map 3 of their way, was that tank by Kimji on map 4 that managed to get that incredible wipe. As we do see the smoker getting cleared here, Boomer got a one boom but nothing really going. Hunter bouncing its way in, getting a scratch and then a land onto Nick. Spit's gonna go down late onto Ellis, the free spit, but that's gonna be the rest of the hit dealt with as the last tank of this home and away series is coming up into the hands of Prove for Team NV. He's going to be looking to do to them on their home server what we just mentioned Kimchi did on the last. Indeed, it's just positioning the hitables and it's worth noting actually the 44 biceps, they didn't even clear the 3k mark on their home server and here NV is just past 6k. <laughs> that alone is probably enough to settle the score outright in this contest. Exactly, yeah. I mean, Envy were playing with the 1,300 points that we saw them get right on the away server, so it was probably like 4,800 total, right? Um, but that's still an incredible score for maps. One through four, that dumpster almost landed onto Coach as Prove is in, getting chipped down a little bit, but then landing a curve rock onto Antax and climbing his way back out as the rest of the hit does die. Rock going in onto Rochelle, but not quite landing. I don't know, these new rocks as well, they pretty much come at you from a side angle versus being straight on. And with high ping, that makes it doubly hard for them to do anything with, as Rochelle is still hitting this tank with some shotgun chip. But there's the hunter landing onto her for a bit of damage. Prove still just staying on the roof, throwing these underhanded rocks, and that one's going to get skeeted by Rochelle, but now she is going to get jockeyed. Tank is in! Throwing a dumpster over that charger, lands the charge as the tank is trying to hit Nick. Does manage to land that punch there as this jockey has Rochelle all the way back in the safe room. Not good whatsoever for the survivors. Oh. That bumper car almost lands onto Ellis, but it's kind of pandemonium now, Dragon. There are three side survivors still in the front trying to kill the tank, and Rochelle is absolutely underneath that bumper car in the safe room. Absolutely, yeah. I mean... They all know it's over, like Prove is just having fun with this rock. So there is a smoker at the back, get it, uh, Nick separated. It's just Coach and Ellis trying to make their way back to the safe room. Prove doesn't have that much HP though, so... Assuming he's trying to keep his tank alive, he probably shouldn't charge in straight away. Rochelle is back on her feet. He does get a punch onto Ellis, and he tank eventually does die, but Nick is going to be dead too. This rate. It would certainly look like that. If it went for him, he could have done, but actually the smoke is just... Smoke is just enjoying his food, and he is going to get cleared. That was a lot of damage going out there. The hunter is looking to troll, is actually going to back off too. Survivors worked their way back to the safe room there after that jockey took Rochelle back that far. Tank ran landed a really, really, really good rock too from almost the bumper oh, cars. There's goodness. a 25 damage bounce by flyby and the charger though is just a bit too late to stack damage on top of that so 44 biceps do indeed survive the tank and honestly they're gonna be fighting for every bit of distance now we see a quad boom go out as well and did flyby just get an achievement yeah i was just about to say uh congratulations to flyby for getting the one hit wonder achievement <laughs> I mean, hey, that is something else for Team Envy that they can celebrate at this point. Jockey lands 
for just a bit of damage as Nick is still jumping around without ammo, I'm fairly sure. Smoker's gonna pull Alice in the back for even more damage onto him. Boomer's gonna look maybe to save or just jump down in the middle of the fracas. Let's see if he does. Spitter is gonna go in for just a bit of spit damage then onto Ellis. That free spit doing work plus getting some damage onto Vares. And kind of like you mentioned, Dragon, it, things are a little disorderly now. Just it's kind of chaotic on both sides since I believe both sides know what the outcome is. Indeed, and now it, it begs the question: like, what are NV gonna do on in the grand final? Like, because the way they're playing their home server is fantastic, but they did take time to get into this try. Things a charger lands and takes Rochelle off back down to below. There's a boomer waiting to vomit all over a shell. Hunter does get roof skeeted. So she has some cover at least, but she's got to make her way back now, running slowly, trying to swipe away at the commons. Spitz is going to try and delay as well, but uh, this is far too wide open area to do anything to stop her. Exactly, and they are going to get a couple spawns in between, it would seem, with these uh, next couple hits, but the survivors are still oh, jockey going for Nick. Oh boy, that's going to be a reset end and end cap. Smoker pull goes out as well onto Antax in the front. Charger's going to join up and just try to take that survivor out of range because the survivors can clear through that wall, but right now they probably cannot after that Charger does get cleared. I don't know if they're going to be able to save him or not. I don't think they can, but let's see if this Jockey and this Smoker are able to get any kind of delay here, as that's going to be damage going out onto Vares. Nick gets immediately repulled. Ellis is going to die in the front. Rochelle has one health left and is kind of trying to make her way in. Jockey's going to get taken out, but, I mean, this is going to be the end of 44 Biceps in pretty short order with Antax already dead. Yeah, I mean, if they make it back onto the rooftops, it could just as very easily be another reset with a hunter coming in, trying to delay the pickup on Rochelle. Um, they're just buying their time. It's just <laughs> they're like vultures playing with like a half rotting carcass already, essentially. Indeed, they are. That hunter's gonna land. Boomer goes in for the scratch. Not going to work. This is theirs getting hit by this hunter, almost to an in cap, and that is going to be the last. Smoker pull of 44 Biceps Existence in RBT5. Congratulations to Team NV, who advanced to the Grand Finals by a score of 6,129 to 4,326 between both games in this matchup. So it is the matchup that some could have expected in some ways, right? Between Rehab and NV for all the marbles in RBT5, and I am super psyched for that match on Hard Rain. It has the winners of RBT1 playing against the team that's been one of the best, if not the best, unquestionably in this game for the past few years. I am going to be so hyped for that when it actually happens. And Dragon, we saw 44 Biceps put up a pretty decent fight here on this map. I expect to see them play in future tournaments as well, but it came out as Envy. Uh, taking the win in the end and I think at this point like you said the thing that's going to make the most difference in this finals just with how strong rehab is on their home server is going to be how envy plays on that higher ping and exactly what they can do to stop any kind of momentum that rehab could potentially have on their home server but it's going to be a tall task for them to deal with Oh, absolutely. I mean, NV are not strangers to playing on high ping. I mean, they were all I mean back in their prime They were like the masters of it um, you know, even though they didn't always win every single away game, like especially against stronger teams such as Velocity and some of the uh, high-performing NA teams of the time. But they did enough overall to always sort of, well, like nine times out of ten, always be on the top end when the final results came in. So they're no strangers to that. They know how to do it. It's just like catching up on that amount of like repetition and muscle memory that they probably like, especially against not been keeping team. up with for the past several years like um other players in this and teams have in this tournament um yeah i mean they can perform very well as we just saw on their home servers it's just establishing that momentum early on and keeping up with it because they did take their time it wasn't really until that epic kimchi tank on map four on the eu server where things really started to come together for team mb but the difference, oh my goodness, the difference. It was like 1,713 points. That was their loss, their deficit. And then they turned it around to 1,806. So it was literally a 3.5k score turnaround. That that's was. just, that's insane.
That's phenomenal, exactly. And that's why, like, having any lead versus Team Envy or Team Rehab is not going to be safe, obviously, because Team Rehab have been beating really strong teams on their home servers, right? So it's going to be down to every single team, you know, in this tournament, aside from those two, has been eliminated, right? And in order for this to be brought home for Envy, they would have to pull off a hell of an upset, I would say, because they're the tournament's three seed versus the tournament's one seed. But it's doable in the sense that if there's any team that has a chance of getting that lead on rehab or not being completely blown out in the grand finals, you know, this is the last grand finals or the last match even that we're going to be seeing on this version of Zone Mod as well before 2.0 pretty much takes over. Um, and so it's going to be down to how well the teams play on ping and specifically I think how well Envy plays on Survivor in that away server because 44, not 44 biceps, but that, yeah, them too, but Frag4 slash Rehab have had such cohesion for so long on that and it's going to be really interesting to see what they're able to do. Normal hard rain as well, so it's going to be a classic setup for it. I am so excited to see that next week and do you have any thoughts here, Dragon, before we sign it off? Well, I, for one, I'm definitely glad, even though it's a home and away server, um, or home and away thing, and my time is a bit short for the remainder of today, um, because it's my last day of freedom before I go back to work tomorrow. Um, but no, I'm glad I, I got to witness this and got to sit alongside you. I just think that was a brilliant match. And I think, um, I think Envy could offer some stern competition in the grand final for rehab of a number one seed. I hope I can see it. I doubt I'll be able to cast it, but, um, I mean, if it's around the same sort of time as, you know, I, I might be able to, to watch it and cast it, maybe, who knows. But, um, yeah, it's definitely one not to miss if you uh, still love your Left 4 Dead 2 in 2021. Exactly, and it actually could be at a comparable time to what we saw here, which is like 9 a.m. on the East Coast in the U.S., and that means that it was about 2 o'clock, right? London, no. No, 1 o'clock London time and 2 o'clock Paris time. Exactly, because Daylight Savings is fucking whack. Um... Thank you to Dragon for co-casting this with me and Vanel for streaming, plus all the teams that have participated in RBT5 up to this point, you know, starting with 64 teams, we're now down to two in terms of this elimination bracket, and I expect an absolutely amazing match next week. So, thank you everybody for watching, as always, uh, teams for playing, Sir as well for being the main server host, but also the owners of uh, all servers that have been used in this tournament, and I cannot wait to see you next week. We will have... The match hopefully scheduled by the early part of this week coming up so that we can then do a little bit of advertising for it as well. But if you know where it's at, we expect you to be there. So thank you everybody for watching. I've been Rails Barlow, one of your administrators and also one of your casters. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.